Hi, hi, friends. Welcome in, everyone. Yeah, just in time. Hi, Vune. Oh, man, guys. It's going to be a great day. Okay, well, this is kind of odd. I just want to point it out. Bonk wasn't first today, guys. Where is, where is he at? We got to check up on him? Oh, no. We got no bonk yet. <laughs> Look at my hair right now. Oh. What is this, the Herbal Essences commercial? No, it's not. Okay, hi, Scott. Welcome in. Uki was first, actually, today. Hi, Cookie. Annie with the 29 months of bliss, he says. Thank you so much, Annie. Wow. Yeah, Sammy's at like 30 months, his next resub, and it's like, how are we in the threes already? How, how did we get here? Hi, baby orca. Welcome in. Hi, CBD. Hope you're good, man. And we have Sammy with us today. Yep. And hello, Mama Reagan. Good to see you. Scallops are lovely if they are cooked properly. That is the best sentence right there. <laughs> yeah. The lights are different? Yes. Yes, they are. Did you notice, guys? Oh my gosh. Still, this setup in front of me is just beautiful. As I cleaned it up even more and oh. Guys, thank you so much for all of the support. Oh, nice job. Is Good job. the that studio looks amazing and it's like you can now have people over and it's not like super disruptive. <laughs> Good morning, White Dove. Yeah, so I'm gonna be hitting up Elgato for something for us on stream. I mean nothing for me per se, but I think we should maybe get something for maybe you guys to get in on for them. I guess we'll see because yeah, most of our stream now is powered by Elgato slash Corsair and it is just awesome. We have had zero issues with any of it. And I also know that uh, Ben also got a key light for himself in his studio. So yeah, here we go. Works for cooking streams, right? Hi, Williams, how are you? Okay, so Mama was asking, what's an ANOVA, guys? We're already in a new month, so let's just start there. We have a bunch of stuff to talk about first thing, so we'll get it over with and then we'll get cooking today. It's going to be a fun one. Really good here too, man. You know what? We have a four-day weekend and I uh, like already feel kind of refreshed, so really looking forward to it. Okay, so... First off, happy September, guys. For those of you that have people going back to school, and if you're a teacher, just be safe, okay? Protect yourselves. Okay. Yeah, happy to hear it, man. Everyone is good. Okay, with that being said, so first things first, Twitch has put out September. Not sure if you guys know what that is but that is mainly for new subscribers to the channel. Although they did give us a special little incentive if maybe some of our longer term resubs want to give us like, or pay for blocks of subscriptions at a time. So like three months or six months at a time, they do give you a pretty good discount right now on those. So check them out. And sad to say there was a little bug on like the first few days that they released it. So some of your like long-term subs were able to get the discount. They have since reversed that. Sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sucks that we're like Twitch isn't doing anything for the long-term resubs. So what we did instead is we're gonna do a giveaway this month because it is long overdue. I mean, with COVID and stuff is morale is at an all-time low around the world i would say so we want to give back to you guys for everyone that is in the channel and we're gonna keep it really fair so only 10 entries per person that way <laughs> even if you blast us it's only max 10. i think that's gonna be really awesome at the end of the month because it's always really exciting going into the jar at the end and it's like whose name are we gonna pull out here hi bbubs how are you and mickey welcome in Hope you guys are well. Much more fair, totally. So we're gonna keep it old school. The way that we've ran our giveaways in the past is if you guys see there, so there's four ways to enter, is you can subscribe for tier one, and that is for our resubs, new subs, etc. whatever you want. You can also cheer 500 bits, 
tip five dollars so this is where our giveaway kind of comes full circle is if you tip the five dollars that is going towards an innova steam oven for the food truck in the future so kind of dual innova things working together there and then lastly you can gift someone a sub to the channel and help build our community that way so draw will be on September 27th. That will be our last stream of the month and it will be at 2 p.m. Pacific. So you have up until then to get your 10 entries if you're interested. Okay, now that we know what the giveaway is all about, what are we giving away? <laughs> One of our favorite kitchen appliances, I would say. For sure, hey Sam? Like since we've got this, it's like really just opened up our world to a different style of cooking, which is called sous vide. So that is a French term that means under pressure. And that's what this guy is back here. If you guys are always like, what's that fish tank back there? So that's how we cook sous vide, is you vacuum seal your product in a bag, and then it gets cooked under pressure in a water bath. That water bath is temperature controlled, so it stays the same temperature for Heck, I don't even know what the longest sous vide is, but we've gone like four days having something in there, like a lamb shank, something that you want like really falling apart. Is it a Novo, the truck's name? No, mama. Okay, so this is the one that we're gonna give away to you guys. This is actually our old one after we upgraded and it has even Bluetooth capabilities. So you can use it with your phone, there's an app and you can like set the temperature, it'll tell you when your food is ready, you can set a timer for it, and the app even has recipes to use. Freaking awesome, and it comes with a hard shell case, so that was really helpful. Yeah, it's just this stick, so the one thing that you guys will have to do, I mean, most of you guys do have like a big pot at home, that's a great starting point for cooking sous vide. You don't have to go all crazy with our Cambro, although it is nice to kind of see what's being cooked. It still needs a fish tank, or like I said, you can totally use a pot. Okay, that should be pretty exciting for you guys. Hi, Snake Eye, welcome in. Your fan just arrived and it is now assembled. Congrats, Annie. You're gonna stay cool now then? They're unreal for big meal prep. Yes, Williams, exactly. Also, a lot of the guides in the Innova app are made by J. Kenji Lopez out from Serious Eats. Unreal. I actually didn't know that, so thank you for that. Okay, now that that is set, we have a special guest on today's stream, guys. Mama Cita drinks wine <laughs> is coming in for the real life stream snipe and she's going to teach us how to make is it Ukrainian or Polish sauerkraut? Whatever we want. Ukrainian. Ukrainian sauerkraut from let's say our family recipe. Uh, my sister, I think. Or her sister. So my aunt's famous recipe. Yeah, mama. Exactly. <laughs> So that's what we're going to start with today. We have like seven heads of cabbage to do. And what sauerkraut is, guys, so it's sour cabbage, and this is a ferment. It is not a pickle or preser preserve. Is The cabbage is left with salt at room temperature, and over time, it gets preserved that way. The only thing with this is it's a little risky because if you contaminate it, then your whole batch is done. So really have to know what you're doing, monitor your temperatures, everything like that. White guy kimchi, <laughs> exactly Manitoban, because I know you're Ukrainian, so you know what we're making today. So yes, uh, she makes it once a year, and then that holds us over for the rest of the year. And this is a thing, yeah, we do all the time if we can get the right cabbage, I would say. All right, so we're gonna use a food processor today to blitz up the cabbage. I think that will be number one. Everything will be consistent when we do it that way and it should be quicker than chopping it by hand. Okay, how do we start? You gotta come in, you gotta meet the crew. Gotta come in, hey, here's all your cabbage. So here's how <laughs> we have the cabbage. Mom, before stream, she just took off all of the outer leaves on the cabbage head and then we ferment it in these like little garbage cans. Let's say, so you don't want to ferment in anything metal. It should be plastic or glass at all times. And yes, Manitoban, 
special type of cabbage. They're called flathead. So if you look at them, they're not as round as your typical green heads of cabbage. So just on a note of that, these are not actually because it's really hard to find the flatheads. I don't know if it's a BC thing yeah. or an Alberta thing, the difference between the provinces, but these are actually the Thai cabbages. Oh, okay. So they're a little bit smaller right. than, uh, than a Copenhagen yeah. or a Dutch flathead. Okay, so... Bigger. Yeah, so some of our Europeans, Dutch flathead or Copenhagen cabbage. And the thing about the flatheads is the leaves are a lot bigger, right? The leaves, well, the heads are very flat and the leaves are bigger. But what the, what the thing is that people like about them and not, it doesn't really matter for sauerkraut what you use, but for doing the leaves for sour cabbage rolls, the veining is very, very ah. fine, and the core is usually yes. a lot thinner okay. and smaller. And so the whole thing about that particular cabbage that Auntie likes so much is she um, learned that from the Hutterites. Okay. Okay. Because the Hutterites would always sell sauerkraut and things like that. She didn't necessarily like their kind of their brine or their br well ferment. not even their brine or just their the ferment. spices she didn't i guess like the flavor of it so she developed her own kind of recipe mm -hmm. for her for the taste of it for the ferment but that was the thing and this year because her garden didn't do well because oh. of all the rain she had no cabbage so she went to the hutterites and she bought her cabbage from the hutterites wow so did she just not even plant cabbage or it just didn't do well? Uh, she planted it. She said she planted uh, like around 10 heads, something like that. And It's um, okay, you're good there. Okay. They're just taking away the floating head. <laughs> <laughs> she said she planted about four, 14, 10 or 14 heads and out of that she only got four plants. Wow. So they had a real bad like spring and summer for rain so it was just too wet for anything dang yeah so that's what these are so the, yeah so these are the ones these are the tie that i bought little from, tie heads from the fairway market yeah where it's all really good asian mm -hmm. you know things to buy there if you're looking for that and that was the guy i was telling you was like giving me the yeah tie because i was buying like she loads up the cart with cabbages. like seven heads of cabbage right and the produce guy is just like what is this lady doing <laughs> Crazy cabbage lady. It's a, it's a good thing I could hide behind my mask, yeah. right? Yeah, I was gonna say, Manitoban, like flatheads get about twice yeah. the size of this, for sure. That's a great point as well. Okay, so we start by doing all the cabbage first and yeah. then we salt it. Yeah, so for the ones that, um, we're gonna use the bigger ones in this one pail, we'll use these for the leaves. Okay. And we'll do the smaller ones for the sauerkraut. Okay. So these have to just be cored. Yes. And I mean, I can do that if you want. Why don't we split it? So okay. one person's gonna core the cabbages for the sour cabbage leaves, basically mostly for cabbage rolls is why we do the leaves. And then the other person's gonna prep the other bucket of cabbage for the food processor for sauerkraut. And then that's the shredded version of that. But if you run out of the shredded sauerkraut, you could always turn the leaves into the same thing by just simply chopping them up afterwards. Yeah, you could, we've done that. Hi, Judo, how are you? It's the time of year to make kraut and cabbage rolls and pierogies and cukes and pickled beets. It is, man. And yeah, that's kind of why we do this at this time of year is because of the temperature, I would say. Yeah, and so we're, I do it in the garage. I mean, once we get it all ready and everything, we won't put the water in here today, otherwise, it, or right now on stream, otherwise it'll be super heavy mm -hmm. to carry up. But I'm gonna say within two or three days, because it's quite warm here, like unseasonally warm, yeah. warmer than normal for yeah. September, uh, it'll start to work fairly quickly. And is that uh, when it starts to stench yeah, like that's kimchi when, <laughs> when, like when you make kimchi and i come down here yeah and who say, farted no can you take your garbage out <laughs> <laughs> gotta wait for the fart smell guys that's yeah, how you so, know it's working yeah and so the <laughs> other thing is um not so much with the sauerkraut because it's all kind of shredded and because it's cut up but with the whole heads 
uh, the first few days it starts to work, it's going to start to build a scum okay. on the top. Like little bubbles. Well, it's kind of slimy. Or even it, worse. It's, okay. I'm going to call it a scum. So you need to skim that off. I just have this nice tiny little strainer that I like for sure make sure it's clean. You know, you try to keep everything as sterile as mm -hmm. possible. Even though the salt will probably kill any bacteria, yeah. right? But um, you skim that off once a day. And then after probably about, well, it'll we'll see because it's warmer. After probably about a week or so, that'll stop. Okay. Uh, but you need and to. And then watch it kind of equalizes. Yeah, and then you just need to brine. watch it. But you don't want that kind of scum to build up on the top or to stay in there because it'll give it a funky taste. Okay, so, that's a good note. Yeah. Anyways, Caitlin can do. A, I think you should do a video of kind of how it looks in those first few days and when it starts to work like that. Yeah, I'll you know. take some videos while I'm skimming the scum for you guys just <laughs> to show you and then I'll post it in Discord. Yeah. That's what we call it in the kitchen. It's the same way when you skim the scum off of the top of a stock pot. That's how you keep everything really nice and clear and clean. Skim well, the scum. Yeah. Hi, Taz, good to see you, man. Can we get a shout out for a couple of our uh, food and drink streamers as well before we start? I see Taz, I see Swilliams. Okay. Okay, so what do you want me to do? You want me to do the cores? Or yeah, you wanna... I think okay. you'll be quicker at doing the cores, right? Well, yeah, or fight with you've the done machine. It more. <laughs> yeah, I'll fight with the KitchenAid. Do you guys remember that thing? <laughs> it's okay, we got Sammy in here for backup just in case. Okay, so where do you want to be on the end there? Or, uh, or I can go here if you just want to go there and I'll set up the cutting board for you. And then I guess if you guys are interested in said recipe, I saw you just have something written down there. There is a ish recipe, so I'm going to get Sam to take a photo of this and he'll post that in Discord as well under the recipe section. Let's see. So obviously this recipe is for 15 heads of cabbage, which <laughs> we are not doing. But 15 heads of cabbage? That's how my sister does it, is like she makes that big of a batch. Yeah. So we're going to have to break it down a little bit. I've already looked at <laughs> it. And so I basically know like how much less salt and the, and the pickling spice yeah. and the onion. So we're um, doing about to half go then today. Not even. Not even. Yeah, because these are you're also smaller. We're doing about a third, so we'll have to just watch what we're putting in here. Can you also use red cabbage? I mean, they have the like red wine cabbage in the jar. Orca, you probably know the one I'm talking about. I, what is it? Coon is the brand, but it's not soured. So I don't know per se. We've never done it. I think that one is probably only done sort of as a sweet recipe. Yes, yeah, that sour. one is and like so sweeter with the wine. The one also, it's, I think it's called Nodessa, is the one in those foil packages, which I like. Oh, I've that never seen that. They also have a red one as well, but I think it's sweet. The I, taste I, is a bit sweeter. Would you say maybe they just put a little bit of sugar in at the end? I don't know. That's don't a that's to. a good question. I just think red cabbage is sweeter. Oh, to that's begin true. With. You don't even know if your supermarket has that many right now. I'm sorry, Annie. <laughs> just do what you can. <laughs> okay. I need to get mom the cutting board. Okay, let me ask you this. How long can you remember that you've seen this be made in your family? Oh, my whole life. Yeah, for as long as you can rem remember your sisters or your mom made it? Um, yeah, probably more so my sister um, than my mom because, I don't know, she just probably made more cabbage rolls just based on kind of her circle of friends and her social life. Oh, that's like, true. Was always, I don't know. Like she's church like, and stuff? Well, maybe? church, and then they used to do catering for weddings, oh. right? So that's when... The, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, they used to do catering for okay, weddings. Okay, that should and, be good. And for church, so... Do you want to use your knife? I can. Since you'll probably yeah. be used okay. to it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're getting going, guys. This is gonna be fun. If <laughs> some of you are like, 
what kind of food processor are you guys talking about that is like a pain in the butt? It's this. This has been around. This is the OG. It's actually like it should be pretty good, but I think just originally we got a lemon from it. So for some reason, like trying to turn it on can be a little bit difficult sometimes. It just needs a little like bash every now and then. So I'm going to try and set that up with the shredder attachment. So we get like little long, longer pieces of cabbage, nice thin strips. Basically julienne, I would say. I'm going to finish my coffee too. And then we can go zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, percussive maintenance. <laughs> Thank you. It was Annie. Yeah, there is a clip for this. <laughs> Mmm, delicious. Okay, let's check this out. Fries sized julienne? Uh, no, you would want it like definitely finer than that. Let's say an eighth of an inch by two inches. Okay, first things first read the direction so we set it up properly oh look at this julienne disc on some models let's hope we have the right one <laughs> okay we need the drive adapter the disc adapter disc adapter and the julienne disc Julien disc. There you go. There you can see it. Complete. And this is for potatoes, vegetables, soft, example, cucumber, vegetables, hard, example, carrots, or for today, cabbage. For the harder vegetables, we got to go on high. For the softer ones, we go on low. Same with potatoes. Thank so you. Uh, whatever the disc would be that would be like making slaw instead. I think that's the one though. Is it the same one? Yeah, Julienne. Okay. Because see how it is? So it puts it through and then depending on how I cut the cabbage to go into there is yes. like how long it's going to come right. out. Do you need a bigger knife too, or you're good? No, I think I'm good. Okay. So like I cut kind of deep out of here, so I mean, you can cut yours in half and everything, but I want to keep my head. Whole, yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit more work. But. So what she's doing right now is just flipping the cabbage upside down and trying to dig out just the core, so we can get all like perfect leaves just peeled off. Guy comes out. I think drive adapter goes on first, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Correct. Oh, you found it, Annie. <laughs> Breaking it down and getting groovy. Oh my God, what is that? Is that from the birthday? Yeah. Oh man. Hi, Jane. Good to see you as well. Guys, have we got a shout out for Jane too? Oh, thank you. I got this fan in front of me and I'm just like blowing. So can I just make the pile of grass right here in the middle? Yep. I'll get a, a little compost thing. Guys, I don't know how this is supposed to go on. Oh, never mind. Yes, I do. Okay, that goes in there. Up. A. Don't, don't you put that? Oh yeah, okay. And then or this goes on? Yes, that goes on. Nope. First, doesn't that go on first? And then you put all those parts in it. I guess this is how we roll. The thing stays on. Sometimes you just make things harder than it actually should be. Okay, 
this is making sense. And now that little nubby there meets up in this thing here to activate it. But first, we gotta put this guy in. This is like one of the more difficult puzzles I've had to uh, complete lately. I'm surprised you wanted to use that today because I was thinking you were just gonna... Oh yeah, 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 this makes sense now. Okay, now I see what's happening. Little nubbies, little nubbies. That turns into there. Yeah, RoboCoop, way easier than this. Where's the RoboCoop when you need it? honestly test it out. I just can't figure out where this would go. I have used it before for not for this but for like for slaw for a big one. So to see That's so cabbage I'm is here. Right? So cabbage is here. Isn't that gonna be really well there's fine, fine. there's medium and there's fine, right? So it's your okay. setting on here. So it, you do need the drive adapter, then the disc. I can show how to put it on though. Is the, well, you know what? There's more, is there a bigger book upstairs with the box and with the rest of the stuff? No. Else? Sam, can you come see? <laughs> we need a mechanical. Third person, oh, please. Oh, I get it. I got it, I got it, I got it. So that goes up. That doesn't make sense though, right? I think I'm good. Remember you gotta make sure the thing's shut. Oh, I remember. Remember guys. <laughs> Oh, she was locked. Slam it. Oh. You gotta just do case okay, stop for a sec. Slam it's it, like, she when mom says seriously? slam it, that's when this you know. Thing is the worst, like I have two KitchenAid products. Probably the most expensive ones, and they both suck. You heard it here first. <laughs> this just in. <laughs> KitchenAid Reviews by Mama Sita. Well, that's true. Like, honestly, both of the ones that I have, are, they don't work. I think I'm not connecting the circuit. That's serious stuff, I know. Bun Grease, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome in. We are uh, just trying to get set up to make some sauerkraut here. Yeah, Sammy to save the day, as always. Yeah, have you tried turning it on and off? We haven't even gotten there yet, dude. <laughs> Hi, Nike. <laughs> Did I have it upside down? I don't believe so. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Your friend has a kitchen robot for making dough. She's a baker. She loves both of her machines. Are you looking for the paper? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't tell you doesn't much. Tell you much. I, I'm gonna go and see what came up. The okay. thing is here, you have all of it, right? Yeah. There's nothing else in the bottom No. for instructions. Yeah, you can put the blade in there if you want. No, that oh, was see. it. I, yeah, I don't know. I think Sam got it now. So then that will push down. This is straight madness. We might end up just doing it by hand. It's only three cabbages. Yeah, you'd probably be faster. You'd be done by now with your mandolin, honestly. But still, like we, we should be able to, or at least know how to use the appliance. And we have before. Hey. Is the outlet working? Yes. 
You guys really don't miss a beat, hey? It's it's actually the connection. Yes. In the KitchenAid itself, in the appliance, where it Thank you. makes contact. We're almost there, I think. Oh! Older than me and therefore wiser. <laughs> That's what we'll go with. We're rolling! We didn't even have to slam it. Didn't even have to slam and drum it. We just didn't need this. Yeah. Didn't need that. Wrong piece to the puzzle. See, I told you it was tricky. Thank you, Sammy. Okay, now that we know it works, do I wanna just do a little test shred of this? When we go to shred it, we'll do a test shred of the Julienne attachment, see if we like it or not before we carry on through the rest. Cause now that we got it set up, it's easy to just switch the blade out. We're good. We got this. Maybe do a testy test. Oh man, tests, Annie. Okay, guys, let's uh, zoom into it. As you can see, things are a little bit off since we set up our lighting or our new lighting. And I have to say, so far, these lights in front of me, way less blinding than what we had before. So as always, we're gonna start by just peeling off. This is like our little protective layer. Instead of having like plastic wrapping, just peel off the, usually it's just the one little outer leaf that kind of gets bunged up, a little bit rusty, not too good. And then the rest underneath is just pristine. Yeah, will this be a multiple choice test? Okay, how fast can you take it apart and put it back together? <laughs> Bareface Killer, we got two key light minis? Yeah. Minis. I knew they weren't like the actual one. Oh, this cabbage is crisp. Like you cut into it, it just pops open. Okay, so we open it up and we get something that looks like this. So this is what my mom is working on right now in the full heads, she'll show you. So she's just taking the core out so that now she can peel all the leaves off in one nice piece. So I don't know if the viewers know like actually what kind of cabbage rolls are made from this. Does, do you guys know, well there's like a couple different versions of cabbage rolls in different cuisines. So we make the sour cabbage rolls with bacon. We're not the family that does like the tomato sauce cabbage rolls with beef. Those are the sweet ones. Those are sweet. This is for the sour aspect. Okay, so now I am just have to take out that core on my own and then I'll probably cut this into like three pieces. So just like that. Cut down a little triangle. If you see there's a bit left, definitely take it out. Dibs on the cores. You like the cores? Sometimes I find they're way too bitter. It's like, oh, what was that? That would be cautious. Yeah, doggo is gonna be in heaven. <laughs> Okay, so the only thing I have to keep in mind is if we look at our lid here, so how we're gonna be doing this is putting the piece of cabbage through that opening. So we need whatever we cut to fit through that. Something like that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's perfect. And then if it's too big, you can just kind of peel the head as well. It's like, oh, it's just a bit too wide. Wow, these layers are like really packed tight in this one, hey? Well, the leaves are really thin. Yeah. Uh, compared to Look like at all those layers, guys. Cabbage. It's 
like a card deck almost. They're getting rid of Twitch things? How come? <laughs> do you want to just leave that there or do you want me to put it in something? I'll get the thing. Lots of compost. You want to devote more resources to the music community. So they're stopping it on January 1st. But wasn't that a great way to like get people recognized? Here, I'll put it in. Kind of glad I, they're getting rid of it. They kept freezing and kicking people out of parties. Okay. I have to be honest, guys. I never participated in any of those events. But it seemed like a lot of people really enjoyed it. I gonna fit? Nope. Okay, so that is one cabbage only. <laughs> and then I'll take out these other two and then we just start as soon as it's all julienned, goes into the bucket. We'll have to do one at a time just because we'll run out of room on the cutting board. Okay, I'm gonna chop up the onion, dice up the onion. Are you done all of your cabbages? Nice. She crushes it though. Okay, now I'm the one that's behind. But okay, so now you don't peel off the leaves until it's fermented? Right. Ah, oh, word. That's actually so easy, guys. So you, now we just leave that cabbage whole with the core out until it's been soured and fermented and then you can easily just peel them apart. Cause yeah, if you tried it now, it's like really crisp and brittle, they'll fall. Yeah, they'll fall apart. So now she's cutting up the onion. Is that something we pass through this as well? Well, if you want to put a dice blade on, or, or like the just, shredder or, or the, all, there's only two so I don't you just know, dice it up yeah, just a just small just, dice on the onion yeah. which is which is very different I was gonna say a sauerkraut recipe people would say onion you're putting onion in your sauerkraut you wouldn't believe the difference that it makes in flavor right like sweeter or mm, I don't know it just gives no I'm gonna say it gives it a more savory flavor okay and then the the, the other thing that's very different for my sister's recipe is uh, the pickling spice we grind it up fine okay and she also put is the she's the only one that I've ever seen do this and I think it too is what is makes her cabbage so tasty is putting the peppers in it yes this is a special one so we put whole chili peppers in the sauerkraut <laughs> okay so we're doing our test drop right now of our blade because we're kind of unsure of how it's gonna turn out. So before we really get into it, just see if we're happy with this. So I guess turn it on first and then go from there. It's plugged in. <laughs> Why are you like this? No, it came out of the thing. Man. It only works for Sam or my dad. Every time we call them in, it turns on. No issues. I'm yeah. dead serious. Please. I just need to turn it on, Sam. Put the plunger <laughs> in. It doesn't. So the 
like electrical mechanisms just in the metal part. Okay, let me test that. Does it seriously need that in? No, thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Because that would have been way too easy. Now we're rolling. <laughs> Hey, how does that look? Okay, first things first, unplug it before we stick our hand in. Yeah. I would say a little bit finer if you can. Can we also control how thick this is? No, so you can no? roll it on your thin, your thin <gasps> and thick. Okay, layer. okay, so we can control it. That's what gives the pressure on the blade. So here's one thing. This little guy, thin, <laughs> thick. Flashbacks. So it was on thick. Yeah, flashbacks for sure, Annie. Is someone doing a clip of that time? <laughs> he couldn't find it. Oh, I'm going to go thinner and see how we feel. Okay, it worked when we put the plunger in. <laughs> We're cursed. Uh, I swear that thing is cursed. There are so many clips. I actually think it's in one of Onyanese's videos. Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> is it a drum kit? Just watch <laughs> it's not that part. Here. Oh, don't speak too soon okay, though. I don't think it's that part. It's, <laughs> it's that connection up in the top where it. <laughs> Yo. Can we get a KitchenAid rep in this live stream right now? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Oh. <laughs> we had. Did you plug it back in after oh unplugging it? Four people it takes. No, I wasn't over there. You're still in the house. Nope, still doesn't work. <laughs> it's okay. This is uh, teaches us to never give up. No, it teaches you not to buy a kitchen. I'm chopping it by hand. This yeah. is it. Yeah. And today, on Kate's KitchenAid review, do not buy the food processor. Or, or the mix master. Oh, she comes out and says it. Well, why wouldn't I? That thing like, <laughs> it's had its issues since day one, too. Oh. Uh, Let's I, go, guys. I you know what? You should just get your mandolin. And that will be the fastest. I think I did it in the restaurant by just by hand. Knife skills, let's go. Okay, first things first, put our knife on the steel, and then we're gonna get going. When in doubt, exactly, Jaxie. That's why we always have to know how to not use an appliance first. Always know how to do it the hard way, and then go the easy route. Go wrong with a knife yeah plus this is what baba would do just saying right she would never use any appliance never had any of those. okay so nice thin strips that look good yes thank you good to go Thank you. Did you hear that, guys? It's nicer than the KitchenAid. Just go slow when you get to the end. 
So yes, guys, it really doesn't matter too much how you cut it. Like it's not gonna be perfect strips. Just make sure they're nice and consistent in size. And that way everything will ferment at the same time. You don't want some chunks to be big and some to be small. Okay, I'm crying over here. She's crying. Yeah, we got the onion out, guys. Can we get some onions in chat? Mom needs it. She's blowing her nose. It's not me today, at least. Just a little emotional over that uh, KitchenAid food processor. Okay, now that I got a good pile, what I'm gonna do, bring up my bucket, and I'm just gonna slide that right in. Start filling it up. <laughs> so yeah, I cut these anywhere from like one to two inch thick pieces, and then I turn it on the flat side so it's nice and easy to slice through. Yeah, whenever we make sauerkraut, guys, that's kind of a symbol that the seasons are changing, right? Because preserving and pickling, that's usually a fall thing. Whenever the stuff in the garden is starting to see its age, that's when we want to preserve it so we can have it throughout the rest of the winter, mostly. Yeah, so everything in our garden is pretty much done round so I picked the last of the beans I think nice yesterday there was just a few so all we have left really is the carrots and your celeriac yeah I'm excited for that which I found a recipe that I'd like to try it's a celeriac scallop so it's half and half with the celery root and potatoes oh that is so good and so it's the carrots the beets the celery and then we're on our second and third plantings of lettuce and spinach. Yep. So, oh, that's what I was going to say. Can you save your uh, egg shells again because the slugs are eating the, the new little seedlings that are coming up already? The worst. Those slugs. Pumpkin spice time for the Americans. Okay, so while I'm finishing up the cabbage here, you're gonna get this. Do we get the salt amounts together first, or we kind of look at how much we have and then go by that? Well, it's okay. This is like these are the recipes from the babas. Yeah. Right. So, um, for my sister's recipe for 15 heads, this would be for the leaves, right? Right. With an entire box of salt. <laughs> okay and three to four tablespoons of the pickling spice yep and one onion diced so literally we have uh what a third because we have three big heads so we're going to say i'm going to do the salt according to the sauerkraut kraut recipe and i'm going to do one full handful of salt per head of cabbage yeah and is that the guide? One handful of salt? Well, that's the guide for the sauerkraut. So I'm cool. Do it the same. <laughs> yep. One fistful. One fistful of salt? For a large head of cabbage. Sure. Just yeah. your uh, basic fistful, guys. Cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about a cup. Good one, Sam. Yeah. So this is all ready to go. So basically, it's like we're going to just wait till you're done. And then we'll do the grinding of the spices. Right. Throw the chilies in. And what we're going to do is we won't put the water in here. Otherwise, it's going to be too heavy. 
messy and awkward to carry up to the garage, but what you need to do is boil water. So what boil I boil water. Yes. Yeah, so what I do oh. is I use my kettle, and you're boiling enough water so that it's covering both the shredded cabbage and it's also covering the heads. Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to kind of stir it up, and I'm just going to wash my hands and my arms yeah. really good. And, get in and there. I'm going to get in there and you want to make sure that that salt is fully dissolved. Yeah. Uh, you know, before it basically gets covered up for the day. Right. And then tomorrow, um, same thing. I'm going to see if I can find something long handled enough that I can just get in there and probably stir it up again if there's any salt that hasn't fully You need like a, a spider? Well, oh, it's not up yeah, there. It's, it's not, not a thing, but. Okay. I mean, it's just like your computer, right? Like this one. Oh, yeah, I could. Well, I would just use, yeah. But you, you don't want to use it. metal, guys. That's the thing, right? It's always plastic. Well, that's you just kind of do by hand. You wash our hands really well, soap and water. And so, one note on the boiling water. So, at the last restaurant I worked at, we also attempted to make sauerkraut and yeah I was the one that cut all the cabbage for it and we did so our garbage pails were like three times the size of this like your regular garbage did pail you, did full. Did they use the actual plastic garbage bins? Yeah the clear yeah. ones. Yeah. And it ended up going off but we didn't boil water for it so maybe that has something to do just like first kind of pasteurizing everything. And then it's a little bit more safer that way, less risk. Well, I think because you're not canning it per se, yes. and you don't have that pasteurization or whatever process, this is what helps is boiling the water. Because not all water is equal. Yes, that is true. Okay, that was the first head. It's okay, this is gonna go quicker now because we don't have to fool around with the machine. So once again, Take off your outer leaf because that's like your protective layer. And then we cut in half. Can and then we'll take the core out. out. Oh, you can if you want. Well, you're you probably want faster to. than me. It's up to you. Are you in a, how are you for time? Oh, we got lots of time, right guys? How much time we got today? Lots of time. Teamwork makes the dream work, though. And yeah, it's always easier to do this with two people, I would say. Are you planning to use a 10 gallon pot to cook this? We're not cooking it, Annie. That's the thing, it's just fermented. Just the water is brought to a boil and the rest is left up to the atmosphere. Who did I hear say white guy kimchi? That's exactly that was Torino, because he's exactly. Ukrainian as well. Oh, we see. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. So, core is out. And yes, it smells just the same as kimchi. Would a V-slicer work well? It would work really well, Snake Eye, for sure. And hello, Suavita. Hope you are well. My hands are going to be killing me. No, I got this. Believe me, this is nothing compared to working in a restaurant. Yeah, you could easily use a mandolin for this too. So this is what I do. I just come and cut like one and a half inch thick pieces. And then like this one's pretty easy because it's flat. Okay. But I usually just oh, like turn it that way. Okay. and then it's flat and safe and just chop oh, it kind of like way. that. Okay. Electric slicer? I thought about it too, Orca. I was like, I bet you the meat slicer would so work. Because that's something Sam and I used to do in the first restaurant we worked at for our pickled red onions, was slice them all on the slicer. And that was always the one task no one wanted to do because the amount of tears. I think that's about the same. That's yeah. the most I've ever cried in my life. Yeah, the amount of tears that were had by like slicing 20 pounds of red onion. You never seen that person work faster than when they had to do that. <laughs> Is 
pickled onion seasoned with the chef's tears. <laughs> In a restaurant, would they do this by hand? Uh, like I did, simply because our Robu Coop didn't have the attachment. It depends on which restaurant you work in, Williams, and how outfitted the kitchen is. <laughs> okay, so which way are you slicing that? Are you slicing that on this nope. way? Nope. This I, way. That way, yeah. Right, okay, I was wondering how you get most of the pieces. Capusta. What is capusta, that one? Capusta, straight up capusta. So that's just basically cabbage in Ukraine. And you know what? Who said that? Torino. Okay, because Dad got the bins down from the shelf in the garage, and he said to me, it "Smells like capusta." Ah, uh, that's cute. Yeah. He knows. He knows. French guys. Personally, think they would just buy shredded cabbage. Ah. Uh, that's the thing though, Orca, is if you want to ferment it, you want to be the only person that's really touched it. So you don't want it pre-shredded because there might be like all the bad bacteria on there and you don't even know. And then it just goes to waste because it's pre-contaminated. So for this, I always would start with whole heads of cabbage. The least amount of hands to touch this, the better. You want a very controlled environment. Hi, my drops. Good to see you. Yeah, happy Friday, friends. We have a nice sunny day again today. And yeah, once we get our sauerkraut done, we're gonna roll into lunch, do a little bit of cooking outside on the big green eggs. And yeah, seafood on the menu again today. We're gonna try and keep rolling with that on our Fridays. So I know like fish Fridays is a thing for a lot of people, but we have lots of lovely seafood, not just fish, to help show or showcase with you guys, teach you how to cook. So scallops on the plancha today, going with some risotto and some carrots that we'll pick from the garden. Do you want me to keep them in here? No, we can just. We're about a third full. We miss you too, man. And yeah, don't be sorry if you're busy with work. Life happens. We just want to know that you're alive and well. That's really the gist of it. Yeah, did someone check up on Bonk yet? He never said that he was going anywhere or anything. And I know that where he's living, there's like all the Cali fires, right? Oh, really? Yes. Drops! Hey, guys. We have another entry into the Anova giveaway. Thank you, Drops. And our first supporter for our Anova steam oven for the food truck. Is that on just pre-order so far, Sam? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's still on pre-order. We can't even buy it yet, but we thought we would get a little bit ahead on it because I don't know if they have like a limited amount that they're selling or what. Annie, you have great news. Just got your blood work back and you won't need to take insulin shots anymore. Hey, we can that, even though we don't do shots. I love that, Annie. I am so happy for you. That means like your body is just taking care of itself now, right? Things are settling down. Food truck, did you miss some news? We, we still have like a couple of years, Williams, but we're slowly working towards it because, well, time flies. So yeah, my drops, thank you very much for that $5, man. So you're gonna be entered into the Anova sous vide giveaway. It draws on September 27th. Yeah, it's fine. 
fine. It's just good knife skill practice. Yeah, you had no idea. Well, it just started today, dude. Just started the giveaway today. It's running through September until our last stream of the month. Thought we would give back to you guys. So yeah, it's been way too long since we've done a giveaway. I also haven't asked you yet, how was your like first week? First week of classes, right? Oh, they're already back in. Yeah. Okay, we have half, half a head of cabbage left. How to make yourself feel very Ukrainian. <laughs> make sauerkraut. Resting before you cook tonight at your second job. What station are you on again, my drops? I forget. This guy though, legend. Not only one job, but two. Thank you for your services. Okay, Cora's out of the last piece. Let's go. Save a head for cabbage rolls. We already got the pail. Yeah, we have three full heads. And then we did, what was it? Five, four, four for sauerkraut. Yeah. I've lost track. Yeah, four, four, for the <laughs> four for the shredded and three big ones. Come up with more salads, Jane. What? For winter? It's really hard to make friends with salad in winter time. I already crushed it. We've already been caffeinated. Just let that fall apart. Just keep chopping, 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 chopping. And then how long will this have to ferment for? Well, same thing. That'll depend on how warm it is. Yep. You know, and you think about how our garage is and how it's west facing. Yeah. So in the last probably month, we've actually been opening our garage in the late afternoon and evening, probably a couple of feet because it gets so hot in there yeah. that we find that it's hard on the freezer. The freezer yeah. is running all the time because it's too hot. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know. I talked to Auntie. She her she made hers in the house. So okay. Therefore, her temperature is much more consistent. Yeah. Two weeks. So I two weeks. Typically okay. for me, because I don't like to make it in the house, I make it in the garage. I'm going to say it's a month. So this is around the same time of year that I usually make it because yeah. I like to have it ready for Thanksgiving. Right. 
there's a note. Yeah, because we'd always have to make cabbage rolls for Thanksgiving family function, right? You always want to get the sour cabbage ready before then because Canadian Thanksgiving is before American one, like a month ahead. If not more. Yeah, We're or more. Sam's birthday is usually right before Thanksgiving, and that's usually around the 12th of October. Okay, Jane. Annie was saying that's how he lost the weight. Yeah, he's been eating a ton of salad. That's true. Hey, we have a seven month three sub as well. Manitoban, thank you for gifting that to my drops. Drops gave us the tip. Manitoban says, hey, why don't you have a sub? Thanks for that. Ta da! Thanks, dude. Okay. We're chopped. We've been chopped. Not actually, we're staying in the kitchen. It's okay. <laughs> Just gonna do a slight cleanup. of the area and then we will measure our salt. We'll blitz up our spices. And then we're pretty much done. So once again, like a lot of work on one day. And then after this, it's kind of just maintenance for the ferment. Babysitting. Yeah, babysitting if you will. And yeah, definitely let's vacuum today. <laughs> Actually, no, we just need to get Doggo in here to do her little vacuum for the cabbage pieces. Yeah, she could probably come down now just to <laughs> yeah. start. She's sleeping on my bed because the fire... Bonk! Started. No, that menu's definitely wrong. It was a morning of mornings. Give me a sec here. Yeah, correction. Uh, sausage hoagie? No. That was just me testing you. Don't look at the recipe either. You get nothing. <laughs> you can say that again. It was a morning of mornings. Well, happy to have you, man, and just glad you're okay. We're like, where's Bonk? Are we okay? Okay. I'm just gonna okay. move this over for now. Yep. We need to blitz up the pickling spice, mm -hmm. and we need the dried chilies, you said? Want to go with like the Szechuan ones or you want our homegrown ones, which will be a bit spicier. This will probably be more flavor. Yeah. And I don't think we need too many because we're not making very much. So uh, actually all you're going to put in is one in the sour heads. And one in the sour heads. And one small one yeah, in the sour krauts. So. I think we should do two though. They're not spicy. Okay, well, but still, you don't want to change the flavor too much of your cabbage. Okay, one and then two in the shredded. Okay. Hey, Joker. Thank you, Swilliams, for that knife command. Yes, that is my knife there. It's also linked on Amazon Blacksmith if you are interested in purchasing it through Amazon, because that'll help me out too. Just saying. Okay, how much spice? So, a good tablespoon for the sour cabbage. Tablespoon for the sour cabbage. And for that's the whole heads. Yes, that's for the whole heads. And we're gonna say good heaping teaspoon for the sauerkraut. We'll see once we kind of mix it up. Tablespoon and a teaspoon. And we go like powder fine or just kind of broken up? Um, halfway in the middle of that. Okay. So you, because there's lots of bay in there, you want yeah. to make sure that that's broken down and whatever is whole yeah. is also, but not powder fine. No, then it might get too strong. Right. And in this pickle spice today, guys, we have mustard seed, coriander, bay leaf, dill seed, fenugreek, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and cloves. That's a nice mix. Not all of them have ginger, but I have to say that adds something very nice to it. Because we have been using a pickling spice with that as well. Those don't get blitzed up, right? 
chili stay whole. Keep them in their little pristine state. Okay, let's go. Basically, you just want to kind of crack the corianders open, crack the peppercorns, and that way they'll be able to distribute the flavor a bit more. Yeah, and make sure the bay is and not the really bay chunky, right? A bit more? That's, I think that's I think pretty that's good. good. See how it is? Yeah, I'm good with that. And look how much yeah. more aroma you're getting mm, from it, right? So good. Okay. Okay, next step now, do we mix that with the salt or we just put the yeah, spices you, in no, first? Let's, you can throw the spices in and then we'll throw the spice on top and then we'll mix it all up. Okay. I might be able to have that on my oh, and cutting board. Onions. And the onions. So how do we distribute the onions? So the onion for... I'm just going to put a towel on that so I can put it on. Three quarters of this is going to go with the sauerkraut. Three quarters of the chopped onion goes into our sauerkraut. And this is two onions. So this two is onions. two medium onions dice, like relatively fine, yep. I guess, right? So this is the chop on the onion. Does that look right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the rest of this one. You can just, um, here, I'll just move this up. Just throw it in the bottom there. All of the onion? Yeah. It's, it. gonna, it's gonna float up to the top anyway. So. Oh, right, that's okay. Just go to the side. Okay, a little hand wash. We're almost there, guys. Not bad so far. It's only taken us like an hour. It seems like it took longer than that. Half an hour of it was just the food processor. <laughs> <laughs> give give your regards to mom. Thanks, Joker. The food tastes so much better with mom's love. It's true. Everyone's love. I just yeah. think it's really important that you learn because you're kind of the foodie of the family, yeah. that you learn these traditions because honestly, they go away. It's gonna get lost, they right? They go away if nobody kind of keeps them up. Out of all of my siblings, okay, there's five girls, only my oldest sister and me, I'm the youngest. Yeah. We're the only ones that do this. The other three don't do it. And the, you also the cousins aren't interested in it either, right? Really? No, like are you talking about Monica? Well, yeah, just like their kids, okay, your no. sister's kids, right? Well, so no, because they just show up for the meal, that's all. <laughs> yeah, it's all on me, guys. No pressure. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, salt time? Salt time. So is there a specific type of salt that we need? Yes, so you need whatever this is. Coarse, it'll be called coarse salt. Or pickling salt. Coarse salt. You're not using product of Canada. Yeah, you're not using table salt or iodine, iodized at all, right? All natural sifto coarse salt is free of both additives and preservatives, giving it a complex and consistent flavor. Minimally refined to retain its purity, it's the home gourmet's choice for pickling, canning, and finer recipes. Ingredients: You just want salt, guys no iodized and i think it, if you wanted to you could probably like use a kosher co yeah bonk was saying kosher salt coarse kosher i don't think it'd be much different from this you're good with that because yeah there's nothing in kosher as well right no. okay so this is where we go with our handfuls so this is four heads so this is four, four good handfuls of salt. i have a pretty big hand too guys i'm gonna come out and say that i don't have girly hands so i would say my hand's not much smaller than yours so like do we want know? to do the handful and then try and pour it into a measuring cup because i think it's going to be close to like half a cup just do the handfuls the, and the whole the beauty of this and it's, so it's you just pour until it starts to fall well, I would say and you're like a handful right i am yeah 
I would say all of this, if you find it's too salty, just rinse it a little bit. Ah, that's the great part, guys. If it ends up being too salty, just, just water it down. Well, yeah, once you taste it, if you find that your sauerkraut's too salty, just rinse it yeah. off a bit before you serve it. Yeah, that's good. Two. What happened? Is it plugged? Three. <laughs> Four. Okay, he wants me to just get this too. Oh, nice. Okay. They're saying your haircut, you look like a rock star. Oh, thank you. Okay, now? Yeah, two votes. Two chilies. And then, and and then, then so for this, you're gonna need, so I would say a teaspoon and a half because we have, do we have four in here? Do we have four? four? But they're fairly small. So let's go a teaspoon and a half. A teaspoon and a half of our blitzed pickling spice. I'm just gonna measure that in my hand as well. And then the rest goes into the heads. That looks about right. Yeah. That's like because, a third of it. Yeah, because that's, we want like a good one to two tablespoons into the heads. Okay. So there's our blitzed up pickling spice. Just kinda yeah. distribute that. I mean, we can always blitz up more if we need. And now we mix it. Yeah, go ahead. Mix it up. I'm just gonna put it on the ground, guys, because I can't get into it when it's up this high. Now we mix it. You want your camera down there to show what you're doing? No, it's okay. We're just trying to mix all of the spices and the salt and the onions and the cabbage really evenly. So we really want to get down to the bottom. Right, and what happens is when I pour the water in, so I'm going to boil water in my kettle, like for probably, I don't know, call it however long it takes. And you want to put enough boiling water in that you're covering completely. Yeah. Both the heads and the sauerkraut. And you'll see that the um, pickling spice will float to the okay. top a bit, right? And then do you weigh it down with a plate on yes. top? Okay. Yeah, so what you do with both, well, it's not going to be so much the sauerkraut, but the heads, because they are going to float to the top. Right. Is I'll take a plate yeah. and I'll take something heavy and, and put it on. I'm trying to think of what I use. I actually think I use my... Uh, mortar and pestle. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you don't want anything metal still. Right. So I think I just used that. I cleaned it up good and I just set that on top to keep the heads below the water. Easy. Not that hard. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, next step. So that's the sauerkraut taken care of, I guess. You done? We're Other done. than boiling the water, guys, which we're not going to do here because it's going to be too heavy to take up to the garage. So she's gonna boil the water, very important, that kind of pasteurizes it and then sets us up later on for this to go really well. <laughs> okay. That's the kraut and then the heads. What was the salt for that then? We don't, yeah, we don't have any in there. Didn't yet, put right? any salt in. No, nope, there's no salt we in We just yet. put so, our spices and chili. So we have three larger heads in here. Yeah. And the recipe is a whole box of salt for 15 heads. So we have a, what, a fifth? Yeah, of it. let's say a fifth. Yeah, so I'm gonna say same concept as Just that. Just use a handful, do a I handful. think, you yeah. You can't go wrong. Per and head? Or would we go a head. bit? Okay. No, per head. And what we can do too is I'm gonna say in the next week, once it starts to work, we can taste that liquid. Yeah. See where it's at. It, it's not. It's never too late to add more salt if you need more. What about spices? If you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't really like taste. Can you add more spices? Sure, uh, because then? it's probably going to take a month for yeah. our, for our stuff to ferment. Okay. That's it then. That's it. Awesome guys. The kraut's been made. Do you all feel Ukrainian now? I hope so. 
Welcome in, fellow Yukis. You're still recovering from this Sammy Cook stream. Okay, this is clean. Okay, I'm taking my stuff. She's taking her stuff and she's leaving us now. You're done it's now. Time right? to cook lunch. Okay. So do your little come up like next week. Okay. One day and you can take a little video or whatever. We'll you'll see what it's like when it starts working and the skimming and same yeah. thing. You can once it starts working, I think you can taste a little bit of that liquid and just see if you feel like you know, it should it's be It's right, like yeah. That. It should be like, it takes a bit for it to go like sour tasting though, right? At first it's pretty salty. I'm gonna say if if any of the viewers know what um, ice cream pail pickles are when I yeah. say that to you. So to me, ice cream pail pickles are what you call a fresh pickle where they're not fermented for a very long time. Say like farmer's market pickles. Uh, or half sour. Refri refrigerator yeah, pickles. Yeah, fridge pickles. Fridge pickles. So at the beginning, that's the flavor that you're going to get is just that sort of kind of fresh. Yeah. Not um, not, not like a bix. It's, yeah, not like a bix sour, here, no. right? No. Okay, hi Splinter Cat also. Yeah, if you're Russian, that's close, close enough, we'll say. We won't fight about it. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, Manitoban called it ice cream pill pickles or fridge pickles. Yeah, or who said in there like almost like bread and butter pickles too. Same thing, it'll be that yeah. freshness. You won't get the savory yeah. yet. Okay. okay, awesome. Okay, I'm out. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was awesome. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> Our first kind of special guest, other than Sammy on stream, guys. Yeah. Okay. I look forward to having more people in here in the future, though. Yeah, does it count if I watch slab videos on YouTube? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we include everyone here, Jane. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. Give me 30 seconds, guys, and we're going to get into lunch. Woot! We're back. We got Doggo uh, vacuuming up all the cabbage scraps, so perfect. Cleanup in Kate's kitchen has commenced. Get rid of this big board. Post it up there. Definitely more snacks. What are the snacks here? <laughs> Sammy was snooping, as always, right? When? Who do, who did that? Okay, now it's time to get cooking. We're gonna make some fun stuff today, guys. If anyone in chat has uh, never made risotto, today is the day to learn. It's been a bit since we've done that, but I always try and make risotto like once in the winter and once in the summer. It only sounds scary. I promise it's actually not that scary to make. Trust. <laughs> Man bear pig. 
Man bear pig. <laughs> oh shoot. Let's get this out of here. Okay, I also need to hydrate. Oh man, that's good. It is warm today, friends. It is warm. Oh, thank you so much, Annie. Yeah, these lights, like we, we booted it up at nighttime, right? So it was already dark out and it didn't look like as good. I was like, eh, but I was like, you know what? That's not the time that I usually stream. Yeah, that was no lights. That is lights. So yeah, now that it's our typical stream time, we good. And he's playing. That's really bright. But the nice thing about these is, yeah, I don't have to blast my eyeballs anymore. Excuse me. Orca, you have not missed risotto scallops. That's what we're just getting into. It's supposed to be high 20s all weekend. I'm pumped. Hopefully you also have a long weekend, Splinter. You're gonna go enjoy it. Okay, on the menu today. Oh, I haven't updated it yet. So we're just gonna go over it together because yeah, it's pretty simple anyways. My warm, yeah, is going to be hot for you guys. Oh, well, hopefully, like, no new fires and stuff start up down there. Joyce, how are you? Welcome in. Yeah, scallops, sauerkraut. Okay, I'm going to take the sauerkraut. Actually, I'm not going to take that part out of the title because we're going to need it later on for the VOD if you guys want to go back and be like, wait, what stream did we make sauerkraut? We're going to leave that in there. So sauerkraut, mom just left the kitchen. She's gonna go boil the water and get those all set up, put to bed in the garage for now. <laughs> and then we'll keep you updated on Discord with how it's going. So yes, stream menu for lunch today. Some pan seared scallops, which we're gonna cook outside over the fire. And going along with that, so we're gonna make a caper brown butter sauce because that is always so lovely with scallops. Chanterelle and pea risotto. So some of our wonderful mushrooms from Zachary. Thought we would showcase those as they are pre-cooked. You guys see me in Discord posting all the time in food photos that Zach just, he just goes mushroom picking, drops the mushrooms off on the egg table, and then when we get home, we get a nice surprise. So kind of process them sometimes even like two or three times a week he brings them over do we cover the pails Annie yes so okay one last note on the sauerkraut before we get into lunch fully I'm gonna boil the water make sure the vegetables so the cabbage basically whatever you're fermenting needs to be fully submerged it cannot touch the air because that's how it will go bad prematurely so submerged you need to use something. So typically we use the plate, anything that will like be very similar to the diameter of the pail to kind of keep that down and submerge and then you just carefully lift it off. Kind of the same deal as our glass little jar weights. Remember these guys? So this is another little fermenting thing. So I don't think they make sour, sour stones that big but just something to weigh it down and absolutely no metal. And you don't like have to cover the pail airtight because yeah, this thing is alive. It is not dead. It is actually like alive and working. Same thing with yeast, right? Is if you seal off the air, you're gonna get an explosion. <laughs> so don't seal it up completely. Yeah, just to keep the bugs out, exactly. But you should leave it like Something where it can burp is what we call it. Just like release the CO2. Is it that it creates CO2? Cheesecloth? Yes, that would be good as well. That's what you use for the daikon kimchi. Exactly, Bonk. So those are for like the mason jars and then for like bigger ferments, usually a ceramic or porcelain plate is perfect. I think Bobby used to put cheesecloth over to keep out nasty critters and she'd say, have to let it breathe. Perfect. Yes. So yeah, if you did like a big thing, a cheesecloth and then just like put an elastic band or tied the top around, that's a great way to do it. 
Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that today. That was like kind of my first proper sauerkraut experience and it is very simple, right? Okay, back to lunch. So our seared scallops with a caper brown butter sauce, our chanterelle mushroom and pea risotto. There's gonna be a bit of lemon going in there too to keep it kind of fresh. And then, yeah, a note on the mushrooms with the scallops. So not all mushrooms go well with seafood and fish, but I find that chanterelles or like oyster mushrooms, which makes sense, right? If it's called oyster, it probably goes well with seafood. Oyster mushrooms go really well with seafood. Is there a bit more like floral and light? Not as like heavy of a fungi flavor. So I think that'll pair really nice. And then the other thing is the chanterelle mushroom is really nice and firm. So it's gonna add some nice texture into that risotto. Time to invest in mason jars and a bucket. Recipe, there is no recipe for today. Yeah, I didn't even choose a recipe today. We're gonna be doing Gordon Ramsay's method to cook the scallops today. It is very simple. Anyone that's watched, what is it, Kitchen Confidential? Hell's Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen will know what we're talking about. Okay, and then lastly, because we need some veggies in our life, we're gonna go pick some carrots from the garden, I think right now actually, and do griddled carrots. So like a little bit of that brown butter caper sauce, griddle it up on the plancha with the scallops. Mmm, so good. Carrots always taste better when they're caramelized, I would say. Yeah, does Sammy get to scream in your ear while you cook it? Why? You've always wanted to cook scallops. Yes, I'm pumped, Joyce. Yeah, I think we're gonna keep rolling with our like seafood Fridays because I think that is definitely one protein. A lot of people are kind of scared to cook for themselves at home. Yeah, can you hear the searing already? <laughs> okay, he's taking the camera outside right now. So let's just head out there and get our carrots. And then I guess we'll make up a little list too for ourselves, but it should be relatively straightforward. What we have to get done is quickest thing to cook today will be the scallops. They have maybe a two minute cook time. So one also note is you need whatever you're cooking your scallops on, rockin' hot pan. Very, very high heat. It's gonna be a high heat, quick cook, done and done. Seafood Fridays for scat. <laughs> yes. What was the problem with the camera before? Literally no idea, Annie. No idea. Couldn't get the outside camera working last week. I, we oh, seriously no don't idea. know. It was just a day. That's it. <laughs> and yeah, baby orca, both sides. Both sides seared for the scallops. And yeah, when we say sear, that means they have to have color on them too. They don't want to look naked. So first things our carrots. We'll do those. And depending on the size, I think we'll probably just cut them in half lengthwise to get a nice flat side to caramelize. I'll just put prep there. And then after that, we'll get our risotto stuff all together because that will be our longest cooking process today. Is we'll probably be starting our risotto inside then starting the fire outside and kind of doing a little back and forth run. <laughs> Doggo. <laughs> oh no, Annie, are you serious right now? <laughs> oh, Joyce, yeah, an onion emote because we're literally crying at that. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay, risotto. So with risotto, very important that we kind of match anything that we're putting into the risotto to the size of the rice kernels. So we got to cut our stuff smaller. So that's why I typically put peas into risotto to like kind of match everything else up to the size of the peas. So we'll cut our mushrooms down a lot smaller as well. So I'll put shant, peas, uh, we'll also be putting shallot and garlic into there. So there lots of flavor is going to be going into this part. And then the scallops will just kind of speak for themselves. 
Oh, that's awesome, Scat. You save the scallops for the stream. Hope they're still good. As long as they don't smell fishy, you're good. They should just like kind of smell sweet. If they have a little bit of like a tinge of scent, just give them a quick rinse. Should save them. <laughs> just a quick rinse, you know? Okay, garlic shallot so some more knife skills there cutting everything nice and fine uh our lemon and then lastly we need some asiago cheese never forget the cheese and risotto one other mistake that people make uh, actually i don't know if it's a mistake but something that's not usually or shouldn't be in risotto is whipping cream there should be no creamy stuff going in other than cheese into your risotto is the rice should create that texture on its own hi titan how are you dude hope you had a good week so far you didn't know that about the cheese yeah okay so asiago and then we're gonna be using some chicken broth for our risotto today. You never want to use water. Please guys, don't use water. So we need a little bit of wine and a little bit of broth. Even if it's vegetable broth, that will be so much better than water. Trust. You knew about adding the chicken stock and adding it slowly. There you go, Annie. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, the golden goodness. <laughs> oh man. And yeah, that one jar should be enough for us. We are good here, Titan. Yeah, we are pumped for our long weekend. We got our catering event tomorrow. And yeah, just crushed sauerkraut with mom. Oh yeah, stream, by the way, guys, starts at 2 a.m. tomorrow. So make sure you go to bed early tonight. <laughs> uh... Last couple things in the risotto. Let's pick some herbs to go in there as well. A couple of fresh herbs. Let's do parsley. Why don't we garnish with chive today? I'll put that at the bottom. Parsley and thyme will be very nice with the scallops. Is scallops are quite delicate in flavor, so we don't want to use any strong herbs like rosemary or sage for this. Spoon by, spoon by spoon with the stock until it's soaked up and then a small bottle of wine. <laughs> Love it. 2 a.m. Pacific. 2 a.m. Pacific. Scat! Thank you so much for gifting the sub to Judo. Welcome in, Judo. And thank you very much for the three months already together, Judo. Thank you for building the community, Scat. I will get all of your entries into the jar after stream, guys, and we'll get that going is I think it'll just be more conducive for stream nowadays because yeah it's it's getting busier for us to stay focused on the food and then I'll update the jar every night after stream and we'll show the progress. Shleemy welcome in how are you? Okay we got our carrots that we're gonna do first our risotto going down and then we'll do our caper brown butter. That's our little bit of sauce today. And lastly, our scallops. There's a little bit of prep on the scallops that we have to do. It's very important, but other than that, they literally just get put on the grill. So easy. Okay, one more drink of water. I got a thirst. Sneaky Sammy, he is snacking on cucumbers actually right now. He's being very good, getting his vegetables. Okay, let's head outside and get our carrots. Oh, hello. She's like, Kate's going, I'm going. I'm getting that cucumber. <laughs> switch it up a bit. Wow, we are high up today. Go to the carrot bed. There we go. Man, this stuff is going nuts. 
Okay, I see a really big one. This is the stubby ones though. So don't be alarmed when it's really like short. Look at this guy, short stub. What a beaut, one done. Okay, let's keep looking. Okay, I see another one. This one was a bit smaller. Two, get all the dirt off of that. We're gonna come to these other rows over here. Let's have a, a white one today. Throw that in the mix. Because did you guys know that carrots actually didn't start out orange? We can thank the Dutch for that one. And I know you guys always want at least one purple one, right? Purple carrot, if I can find it. We're actually working our way through these pretty well. Oh, what's this? For Doggo? Is she in the, in the view? Are you a good Doggo? Okay, sit. Okay, stay. Stay. Nope. Stay. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> it went in the dirt. Good girl. Okay, one more. And then I think that's good. That's a good carrot, hey? One, two, three, four, five. That's a lovely little bunch. She's like, those are all for me. <laughs> okay, let's go back in. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna give these a rinse and take the stems off at the top. I want to start cutting them up. Let's get in here. She loves her veggie treats. It's true. <laughs> Can you cut the top off the carrot and replant it? I think just the stems grow though. Scat. I don't think you get another carrot. You just get the carrot tops that grow a bunch more. I could be wrong though. Could be wrong. That's something I've never tried. How is that carrot you're having, Sam? Nice. It is BC. First two. Garden is on the short list of things to do. Still to this day, one of our like favorite clients so far. He lives by himself out on like a super nice property. He has his own lake and everything, but he has <laughs> this uh, long list of projects, he calls it. He's like, I have thousands of projects. And I was working outside a lot because I was painting baseboards when we were there. So every time he'd like complete something off of his list outside, he'd be like, okay, I got project 96 F completed today. <laughs> like that is epic, dude. Oh, Bob. It's always fun to have projects to work on though, isn't it? Thank you, Scat, for gifting the sub to Baby Orca too. You've gifted 24 subs in the channel so far. 
Welcome in, baby orca. Just another member of Kate's kitchen crew. Okay, let's uh, dry these off so it's safer to cut. out of the way for now and then when the carrots are cut I think we'll just put them in a bowl just a little bowl to bring them outside for ourselves second sub there last time it was Sammy there you go hey you already have three months in a row love that okay first thing we're gonna do also look at these carrots so those those lines that's from a worm they're called wire worms. They're like skinny and yellow. Not a good worm to have in the garden. So that's why we got to start eating the carrots up. Another one is they just like carve right through and leave. They were there and then they're gone. And then it just like kind of starts to mess it up. Yeah, you have a three month badge. <laughs> there must be another month in there somewhere. Okay, so we're going to cut the top off for sure. And then on this guy, we're not going to peel the skin off. We don't have to do that because it's nice and thin on our garden carrots. Okay, Annie, no worries. Yeah, whether we're here or not, I hope you have a great rest of your day, sir. And don't work too hard. We'll see you tomorrow, I hope. Okay, so not peeling it, but let's just kind of clean up ugh, where the worm got in there. I seen it. Did you see it? That's it. Hate them. Is that the same thing as a carrot fly though? Like the fly probably lays the egg and then the worm hatches. Ugh. A little bit on this one too. These are my carrots, not yours, worm. Okay, take the top off of that guy. I always like the white carrots, how nice and green their tops stay. This one's actually pristine, and I think these ones are as well. Okay, there we go, guys. Not that much waste. Not too bad. Okay. This guy obviously is the largest out of them. So let's cut down the small ones first and then we'll match up to this guy. So I think for this, if we cut this in half and cook it on the plancha like that, it should take less than 10 minutes. And I usually only cook them like one side down. So just keep it that side down the whole time. So we'll have to control the temperature so it doesn't brown too quick either. We'll see, we'll see. Worm probably fertilizes a little bit though. I wonder, I wonder, hey scat. I mean, every bug kind of has its own job in the ecosystem, right? This one is a bit thicker, so I think I'm going to quarter it. Well, at least they're not demolishing the carrots. Yeah, yeah. At least the worms don't go, like, all the way through. But when I was working in the restaurant, like, the carrots from the farm destroyed. It's like, oh, man, I don't want to waste all this. But you can't serve, like, worm-eaten carrots to customers. This one is very large. The little wedges of it. And yeah, whenever I cook carrots, I always go for one flat side minimum so that we can get a little bit of caramelization. Because they're nice and sweet. Okay, that's that guys. That's as far as we have to go for now. And then before we put them on the plancha, 
that's when we'll salt them and oil them. But we're not going to do that now because it's going to start to draw moisture and then that's how we're not able to get any caramelization. So keep them as dry as you can until you cook them. Really though, what is worm poop? Dirt and digested plant matter. It's vegan. I'm surprised that's not become a thing. <laughs> Okay, risotto. So first thing for our risotto is we need our special rice. I'm using some Arborio and the only thing I checked on this package is that the rice came from Italy because to me that is important. So that's what I did and yep we are. And this bag cost $3.00. And then one note on this, so a bag of the exact same weight and size produced in North America cost, it was on sale for $5. I was like, what the heck? Like, why is that rice more expensive? So go for the Italian one. <laughs> oh, you haven't attempted it yet, Bonk. I am actually surprised. What about you, Cookie? You attempted risotto? Hey, DJ Con Carne, how's it going? Okay, so they even, what? I didn't even see this on the back of it when I purchased it, but they actually give us a recipe on the back of the bag. That's when you know. There it is. There's the secret. So what does this say? In a medium-sized pot, saute one finely chopped onion in four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil until tender. Add one cup of uncooked arborio rice. Stir over high heat for two minutes. Add one bouillon cube and one cup of cognac or white wine. Continue cooking and add one cup of boiling water every, sorry, let's exnay the water and just put stock. Add one cup of boiling stock or hot stock every three to four minutes as the liquid is absorbed. That is a very good recipe. At the bottom, so for variations, add porcini mushrooms, peas, baby clams, halfway through the cooking time. Yum, yum. Risotto con fungi was your first dish as a kid? Oh my gosh. I love that cookie. And hi, Laughing Wolf quite the busy and exhausting week. It did fly by and yeah, it was quite busy. Happy that it's Friday for sure. Okay, so I think we're gonna go with the one cup of rice too. What do you feel, Sam? Like one cup of risotto rice kernels is gonna cook no, to two portions or you want extra? Do a little extra, just two cups. Two cups worth of rice kernels, okay. I was gonna go for the scissors. Hi, Williminy. Hope you had a good week so far. 75 grams per person, baby orca. Are you a risotto master? How do you know this? And the fact that you said grams, oh, my heart, be still. <laughs> Weigh it out and let's see. I had a cabbage on my toe. No, Algo didn't do a very good vacuum job. You love making risotto and your dad taught you how to. Oh man. There's so many different variations of it. I think it's a perfect vegetarian like base for any meal. You only buy boxed risotto. Like the rice kernels, are you saying? So let's see what 150 grams looks like. I went too far. That would have been a cup. Sam says do 300 grams. Okay. Four portions, and that's like one and a half cups, I would say. 
of the arborio rice. There's a couple other variations of short grain rice that you can use for risotto. Uh, one that I know of on the top of my head is called carnaroli. I don't know if I've ever used it though to make risotto. You've never cooked neither risotto nor grits, but both are similar to each other in the sense that they are somewhat difficult to make perfectly. We could say that. Uh, a lot of people are scared to make risotto. It's just something that takes time and attention. And in the North American world, it's hard to come by both of those. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just keep stirring. Yeah, that's what I sing when I make it. Okay, boxed risotto. Positive the box version is nothing like the one made from scratch. What? Has the seasoning stuff and other packets? Is the rice already cooked? Let me ask you that. Okay, we got our rice. Next up, let's move into our mushrooms first. And I don't think we're gonna use all of those. Let's go with one cup of the chanterelles or like I said, oysters. Use them all, Sam? Okay. Yeah, that's true. It'll probably be one cup anyways. So the way that I prep our chanterelle mushrooms, so here's a note. If anyone is interested in the Inova giveaway, this is used with the Inova. So I pasteurize the mushrooms in the sous vide in the bag. Obviously this has come out of the bag because I used the mushroom juice. What, we used it last week in one of our dishes and it was so good. And then one thing with the pasteurizing in the sous vide with the mushrooms, you just once again want everything to be consistent in size. And chanterelles, the way that their texture is, is you wanna tear them because they're kind of like stringy and dense. Okay, the rice is not already cooked in the box stuff. Thanks for sharing, guys. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But if the rice isn't cooked, it can't be that far off. So what we're doing with our mushrooms is we're gonna match it to the size of the peas in the risotto. So nice small pieces. And I love adding peas into risotto because well, number one, it gives you this nice, like bright green color in the mix. And number two, it gives this like nice pop of juice and sweetness as well. Kind of complements the salty cheese really nice. Yeah, we have a giveaway bonk. It just started today. You guys have until September 27th to enter. The draw's at 2 p.m. Pacific that day. That's our last stream of the month in September. And to make it really fair for everyone this time, we're capping it at 10 entries per person. And then one other note is all of the tips that we accumulate from the giveaway are gonna be put towards our Nova steam oven. Let it come full circle for the food truck. Thank you, Willamini, for those 500 biddies. I'll be sure to get your name into the jar after stream today. Thank you, Cookie, for the 1,000 biddies as well. That's two entries already. <laughs> happy Mushroom Friday. Yeah, just happy Friday in general, friends. They smell so good. Chanterelles are kind of the one wild mushroom that remind me of meat the most. Like this is most similar in texture to chicken, I would say. Woot, pyramid heads, thank you for that follow. Welcome in. Yeah, nice giveaway, Willamini. And then the other thing that's going on in September this month is Twitch is doing September. So this is a perfect point for all of our kind of new viewers and followers that we've gotten lately. If you are interested in subscribing, you can for a discount this month.
You're two hours from a happy Saturday. <laughs> Love it, Orca. Okay, all of these juices in the bottom though, we can uh, put that into our chicken stock when we heat it up on the stove. And then we got our nice mushroom flavor as well. I'm just gonna pour the rest of those out. <laughs> man, I'm still cooking in the future, Orca. Oh man, <laughs> set for life. I think Sam's right. Once this is all cut down, we only have about a cup anyways. Yeah, I don't know if I would use like a button mushroom for this because they almost don't have enough texture to them as they would go a little bit too soggy. And there's also not a ton of flavor there. So they're really just gonna kind of soak up the risotto juices more than anything. So don't use just like your typical white button mushroom. Hey, that's my dad. You guys maybe saw him on our starting soon screen on today's stream. He was uh, gallivanting around doing some maintenance on the house. Thank you very much, dad, for the 26 months in a row. One of our longer term resubs for sure. <laughs> Do I ever get tired of standing, Willamini? I do have special mats, yes. So yeah, I don't get tired of standing. I think I can stand the longest I've ever stood at one time without breaks is 17 hours in a kitchen. <laughs> that sounds so bad to say. Oh my God. But yes, I do have these special little foamy mats from Costco. Essa, hi, hi, welcome. Splinter Cat paying forward the gift sub they got from Norges and gifting it to Essa for three months in a row. And we got Joyce coming in with the 300 biddies because we got a hype train now. Thanks, friends. If I turn this a bit, we can see our little Lego hype train. So let's do that. There it is. There she is. Haven't changed our conductors in a bit though, but we still got old faithful hot dog man up there. Yeah, choo choo. Is it Friday though without a hype train? I don't know. <laughs> and we got Jiggles coming into the party for four months in a row. Thank you for that subscription as well. I'm gonna have a bunch of writing to do after stream. I love it guys. <laughs> okay, risotto so far. We have our 300 grams of rice kernels. This is Arborio rice, it's a short grain. Another version you could use is Carnaroli, and I think there's maybe one or two more. You'd have to look it up though. So that's enough for four people, let's say. We have our approximately one cup of chopped chanterelle mushrooms, uh, just under a liter worth of chicken stock. We can start kind of gathering that all together. Next up on the list, let's grab our peas out of the freezer and then those can start thawing for us. Yeah, sorry guys, peas are done in the garden so we're going back to frozen peas for now. I hope you can understand. Hi Rook, how are you? Yeah, about 750 mils of the broth there. Two staples I always keep in my freezer for veg, peas and corn. You can never really go wrong. It's like those are two things I always throw into soups and stews. And well, sometimes frozen veg actually tastes better than what you get in store because the frozen veg are picked when they're like at their prime and then just frozen. Whereas lots of stuff in the store is picked early so that by the time it makes it to the grocery store, then you are able to eat it. 
So let's go with also one cup of the peas. The peas will have to cook still and the chanterelles can take another little cook as well. So around the three quarter mark when the risotto looks like it's about three quarters of the way being cooked, then we can throw in these two items so that they can finish it off. Peas don't really take much for cooking though. Basically just heat them through and that's it. Yeah, unless it's mango and avocado, those are never ripe. Or they're not ripe one day and then the next day it's just like rotten. No! Okay, cross that one off. Peas complete. Okay, let's go into the fridge now. Let's get our garlic, shallot, and lemon, and our cheese. Garlic, shallot, lemon, Asiago. Perfect half shallot. Shallot. So good. It's a must for risotto, I would say. You can't skimp on the cheese. Mmm, pea soup, yeah. I'm reading your thing right now, Laughing Wolf. Oh, you went to visit your Nona. You couldn't go inside, but she came out to see you, checked into your hotel, went for supper, and then you relaxed. That sounds like a nice day. Holy smokes. Okay, let's start with the shallot for now. First, peel this up. So this is a half shallot that we've used previously. Let's get another little container out. Uh, let's do times two. Hey, powdered. Yeah, I had you at Chanterelles. Good, I'm glad. They are right here. We just finished cutting them up for the risotto. Okay, as with the rest of our additions into the risotto, we have to match the shallot. So this is what I usually try and match to the size of the rice kernel. So we can call this cut like a brunoise which is the smallest dice in cooking. So same kind of thing with chopping onions, guys, is we follow the curve of the shallot and then we always follow the kind of natural lines in it. And then I always leave a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch uncut up here to keep all of our layers together. Let's start nice thin slices. Oh, that piece came off, that's okay. Okay, now we got that. Now we can come across and do our dices. And then when we once we kinda get to the end here and it starts to fall apart, I just turn it onto the flat side and then come and do nice thin slices through it. You can kind of rough chop that little bit at the end to match the rest of the nice, perfect dices. And because we're cutting the shallot so fine, it can actually be cooked with the garlic in the pan. Typically the garlic would burn before the shallot, but because everything's nice and fine, they can all go in together. So pop that into a little container. I think a risotto is a really great dish to kind of teach you some timings of how long things take to cook. Also patience. <laughs> hey, thanks guys for that hype train. 
I've got all of the level two emotes now. And hello, Mr. Crumbler. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Okay, let's do three cloves of garlic in here. And we'll use the garlic press to mince those up. Make our life easy. Smash the clove, makes it easier to peel. Italians usually don't serve it for just one person. It's a lover's dish, two person minimum. Hey, that was like when I was in Florence, Orca, is I really wanted to get like a Florentine steak, but every restaurant would not serve it to a single customer. It had to be eaten by two people. So I ended up asking uh, one of the guys that I was staying in the hostel with, like he was staying in our mixed hostel room, super chill person. And I was like, dude, I really want to go eat a Florentine steak. Can you come and split it with me? And so we did. And it was actually really awesome. And that was the only time I did anything with that person. And again, let's just make a note on that. <laughs> I was like, well, at least I got steak out of that experience. I was just there for the food. Let's put it that way. Okay, mince up the garlic. It's okay, Laughing Wolf. I'll just read through your walls of text. You shared a plate of risotto. Aw, do you remember what type of risotto it was, Orca? And yeah, I think it's safe to say like, if when you're in Italy, like food is life. I think that's why I loved it so much there. Like just everything revolves around food. For sure. Okay, we got our shallot and garlic ready. Check, check. Let's get into our lemon. So we'll do a bit of zest and juice. So I'll zest the rest of this little part and then we'll take the juice from half of the lemon. That's really nice that you got to see some relatives laughing wolf. Yeah, because most of us are like missing everyone right now. Okay, how do I want to do this? Like that. Zest it up. This is where we'll get most of the lemon flavor. Nice bright lemon flavor. And then we'll get some balancing acidity from the lemon juice. So let's say like a teaspoon of lemon zest. We really don't want too much of the zest here because we want all of our flavorings of the risotto to like balance each other out. Especially you don't want to cover up the flavor of the mushrooms, right? Give this a roll. Oh, you had lasagna and a great big cake with coconut on it. Yo. I'm into big coconut cakes, let me tell you. That was actually gonna be like our wedding cake this year is gonna be like a toasted coconut. Sam and I love coconut. I'm gonna trim up this end of the lemon, otherwise it's not gonna fit in here. Hey, Mr. Jingles, how's it going? Yeah, you already had dinner. Risotto is a great snacking item though, baby orca. Of course you can come over. That's why we're making extra. That's a juicy lemon. Yeah, coconut cake, mmm, so good. Another check off the list, lemon, done. Okay, next up, our cheese. We will pre-grate it. 
That's the one thing with risotto. You don't want to be like prepping your additions as you already have the rice cooking. That for sure would be stressful. So one of those things where we want to have all of our mise en place, so everything in its place before we start the dish. Oh, a bounty cake? Yeah, chocolate and coconut, that's even better. Okay, so I'm using the North American version of like a Parmesan cheese. I really love Asiago. I think it's a great middle ground for like having a little bit of creaminess and a little bit of saltiness. And it's also just a bit less expensive than your Parmigiano Reggiano. Let's get the cheese later. And we're gonna go a fine grate on this. And yeah, we're gonna go with like a full cup of grated Asiago, I think. Your father's family emigrated to Canada from Italy when he was between eight and 10. Oh, unreal. And you still have some family over there, dude. I always say if I was born like another heritage, it'd be Italian. You'll translate the Dutch recipe for me? Yes, of course, Orca. I love that. Post all of the things in Discord. It's seriously my favorite thing to wake up to you guys. It's like, okay, gotta check Discord first thing in the morning. There's usually like 30 messages. It's like, oh my God, what happened last night? A small cheese mountain. Uh, Dust Pirate is not with us today, so this is for him. Yeah, you do, Scat. This cheese grater is a very good one. I think we got it off of Amazon, so I will show it to you. Uh, Chef Remy. That's the one to look for. Chef Remy, like it is so sharp that I am scared of it. Even Sam's scared of it. Oh, I knew it. Yeah, dust, I am here. <laughs> Cheese Mountain summons you. Thank you, dude. A little sneaker. Great to have you, man. So happy that you had like a nice weekend away last week. I was kind of jealous. I was like, I want to be on that boat though, on the lake. <laughs> Not enough cheese. We'll do some like microplane cheese over top to garnish after. How about that? Have some cooked cheese and some fresh cheese on top. Cause I always like how it kind of looks like snow. Okay, another thing. Asiago, next up, let's go outside and pick a little bit of parsley and thyme. I'm just gonna quickly go rip out there and cut it. Yeah, cheese and butter makes everything better, Ice. I always pray that I never get a lactose allergy. grasshopper out here. He's clapping. He's got claps. Pop, 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 pop. Oh no, I just walked through a spider web. <laughs> Send help. Got him. Boom, boom. Fresh herbs. Baked cheese cookies. I am in. I like cheesy crackers. Aw, oh, thanks for posting the recipe, Orca. I will check that after stream. Okay, let's pick our parsley off the stem first. And then we'll do the time. And then we 
are going to chop this up really nice and fine. And I think we're just gonna put it in with the chanterelle mushrooms. And then when that goes in with the peas, the herbs can also flavor the risotto. I think that will be a good timing. Hey, Heat, how's it going, man? Good to see you today. Picked, and now these guys. So I just hold one part of the stem and go up. Bottom part of the stem, go up. And the top part of the stem is quite delicate, so if that kind of breaks off, that's okay. You can chop that into the mix. Just want to get rid of the bottom woody part. Are we going to cook with mom? So sauerkraut with mom is already done heat. We actually did that first thing on stream. So if you, if you want to see the action from earlier, please go back and watch the VOD. It was really nice. I think it took us around an hour and a half to make up the sauerkraut together is we did kind of two different kinds. We did one of the shaved or like chopped finer sauerkraut and then we did some whole heads of cabbage for the leaves for stuff like cabbage rolls. Is my mom's heritage is Polish Ukrainian. So it is now my job to start learning those traditions to pass it on to well, so far, not kids, but you guys. So we can share that all together. Okay, the time's been picked. We can start by chopping that up. What's wrong with the stick part? Is it bitter? It's a bit bitter. And then, like I said, it's woody. So not really, uh, like, good to eat. You can use it as a toothpick or floss. <laughs> Probably just spit it out. Exactly what just happened, that's why we don't use the stem. Because <laughs> you don't want your uh, people to be spitting out the time stems when they're eating the risotto. Yeah, you're eating Groot, not Groot. Baby Groot. That looks good to me. Let's get our shrooms up here. Dump our herbs in there. Come in with our parsley. Uh, dill, dill would be okay in this. I don't know if I would like love it with all the flavors that we have, but dill would, would go well if you had it around. Oh, really, Baby Orca? So Groot and like the movies is the little tree stump. But in Dutch, Groot means big or great and tall. Well, the original Groot is large. And then there's Baby Groot. There's another stem that we can get rid of. Yeah, he was big in the first one. There you go, bonk. I think those are still some of my like favorite movies that have come out recently. Just keep chopping, 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 chopping. You only saw the meme pictures, never the movie yet? Oh. I mean, the movie's good, but the soundtrack, though. <laughs> That's a big part of it for Sam and I. We love the soundtrack. The amount of times that we jammed out to that in the kitchen working. All right, guys, what do you feel like listening to right now? Guardian soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> Some good classic rock hits there. Yeah, it was half of it, for sure. Okay, another two things off of the list. So that's it for our risotto stuff then. Here, I'll just 
put it all in a sheet pan and show you guys how it's looking. Very nice and organized. Move that over. There's that. And then, okay, so we have our rice, peas, shallot and garlic, lemon juice and zest, mushrooms, thyme and parsley, cheese, chicken broth. Good to go. So let's put all of that just over by the stove top. That's where we're gonna be making our risotto today. And now next thing on the list is making up our sauce for the dish. So a caper brown butter. Very, very simple actually. Piano plater 88, hello. Hugs to you too. Uh, been good, been good lately. Like I said, I'm feeling refreshed today. Got a four day weekend, so pumped about that. And yeah, the sun is shining, so feels nice. Hey, Joshua Klein. Okay, so my all time favorite movie. All time favorite movie. Okay, all time favorite Disney movie. Let's start there. Peter Pan. Um, all time favorite movie though. That's tough. I don't think I can choose that. I'm not like a huge movie person, so I don't know. There's just so many. Maybe Guardians? But then I can also go like old school and say something like Dennis the Menace or Mrs. Doubtfire, because those are also legendary. What is brown butter? It is butter that has been cooked to the point where it's like almost starting to burn and it gets like obviously browned in color and more nutty. Give me a sec. The dog's just like scratching her face off. She knew I was coming. She's like, I'm out of there. Gladiator is your all-time favorite. Switch between Lord of the Rings and The Godfather. Okay, Godfather is pretty good too. Yeah, that's an impossible one, exactly. Don't even get us started. You could talk for hours on it. Nutty in flavor profile, exactly, Bonk. So let's get our butter out, let's get our capers out, and some white wine is the other thing we're gonna need. And for this, we want an unsalted butter, for sure, so we can control the salt level in our dish. Here's our little capers. And then our wine, which will also need the wine for the risotto. And we have a brand new bottle, Pinot Grigio, to crack into. That is like my go-to cooking wine. Okay, give me like 30 seconds, guys. Second bathroom break, and then we're gonna get started.
Okay, okay, okay. I think we lost Sammy. He's like face down on the bed. I think he's fell asleep. He had his snacks and he is napping before we got to cook on the egg. Yeah, piano player, learn to do a little bit more cooking so you don't have to buy the packaged dinners so much. But yeah, that is the thing, is a lot of us don't have the time to cook for ourselves, but we can make time, right? It's all about your priorities. Uh, ice, you'd like to get away from dried herbs and use more fresh, that's your goal. That's a great goal to start with because it really does make a difference. I think that was like one of the biggest things working in a restaurant is like there is barely any dried herbs spices yes but dried herbs no it's all fresh where's the scallops we're almost there we are on our second last thing before the scallops so let's get into here we just need a little pot for this little sauce pot and we're gonna start by cutting our amount of butter that we need. <laughs> this package has seen better days. I'm gonna go, what did we have on our measuring thing here? So this is about just over half of a cup, it looks like which I think that's what we're gonna go with, is half a cup of butter to cook down. Wrap the rest of that back up. Your pizza is done. Wait, what kind of pizza are you having? Okay, now we're gonna put that on the stove top, just on, we can do like a medium high heat to start for sure just to get the butter melting. And then while we wait for that, let's take out some of our capers. So because the capers are gonna be going into a hot oil, I see the little like reflection off of something. So because the capers are gonna be going into like a hot fat of some sort, wet things and hot fat do not play well together. That's how you get like the popping and burns happen that way. So you wanna dry that off and up to you whether you want to cut them up or not. I think they look quite nice whole in this type of sauce because they kind of break up a bit when we put them in with the butter. So let's go with like a teaspoon worth of capers. And what capers are, so nasturtium flowers, you guys know what those are? You can take a quick peek and find out actually right now. On the right hand of the screen there, you guys can see little orange flowers on the one garden bed. So that is where capers come from. So that is after the flower has bloomed, it creates a seed. And then that seed gets brined with salt and water so it's quite salty not really sour because there's no acid put into it just want to grab one of the seeds to show you guys how they look because I'm drying some outside right now so I can plant more next year because the type of nasturtiums I have not really the type to make the capers from so you can see how big that is compared to this. And then that also, like there's a caper kind of market. So the smaller the capers, the better the quality is what we've learned. So this is how the seed looks when the flower is done and then we dry it out. So I'm just drying them in the sun and then we can plant that and that's how we get another plant. Full circle. Put those back out. I guess that's my first kind of intro into seed saving for myself as well. Exciting. 
Okay, koala. You did jerk pork and peach puree pizza. Yum. Like spicy and fruity and sweet. I think that's a big one, Josh, is maybe a lot of people have had scallops not cooked properly and that's why they are unsure of them. I think I'm with you there, man. Okay, let's go to the stove. Watch our butter. Get rid of this light bar. So it's just melting, but it does help if we give it like a little swirl. Help it along. And then also while we're waiting, let's get out our pan for the risotto. You can use something kind of shallow. I would say pan or a pot. Do I want to use my cast iron today? Maybe. Hey, ice. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. You always learn so much when you come here. That means a lot to me. So thank you for letting me know that because that is like the premise of this show is to be educational for the most part. And then we can have fun. <laughs> Hi, Scooter Beach. And thank you for that follow, Hamed Karami. Hamed, Hamed Karami, welcome in. Okay, we got our first foam. We're gonna get two foams and then browned butter. Let that keep going. So right now we're actually like cooking the dairy solids out of the butter, is we are doing a process of clarifying. Have I seen stovetop kisses on YouTube? No, I have not. The lady is a riot. Uh, you're more than welcome to link that in chat or in Discord, and I would love to check it out after stream. Okay, let's check again. A little swirl. We're still on our first foam. Let's get out our big pan for the risotto and then obviously a spoon there's gonna be a lot of stirring coming up kind of trips you out to think someone was walking past a flower one day and picked the seed off tried it and found a way for it to be good food that's the stuff that makes me think that like humans in the past were actually maybe more brilliant than they are now, right? Like to figure out how to feed ourselves so we didn't die. That takes some knowledge. Okay, first foam is almost done. Just gonna swirl that around and we're gonna come up to our second kind of bubble. So now see how the bubbles are getting larger? That means we're getting close to making the brown butter. So we don't want to walk away at this point and we do kind of want to keep this agitating. I'm also going to turn down the heat to like a medium low because once it browns, it can like keep cooking if you let it get too, too hot. And then one telltale sign that the butter is browning is that, yeah, it smells nuttier. We're getting there. Don't really want to stop this process though. Okay, that's looking nice. It's like just kind of golden. And then if we look in the bottom, there's a little bit of like browned sediment. So before we pour the wine in and kind of cool it off, this is where we put our teaspoon of dried off capers. So I usually just kind of squeeze them out in a towel. And careful when you drop it in because it's going to pop up a little bit. Possibly, depending on how hot you add your butter. Okay, put it back on the heat. And this is only gonna be like a 20 second kind of thing. That looks good to me. Okay, now to stop this whole process from overcooking and getting too dark, we don't want burnt butter, we just want browned just a touch of wine and this could potentially bubble up too. So just careful. There's like two tablespoons and now that kind of acts as a deglaze, but it also 
rounds out our brown butter little sauce a bit. And that is that. We can give that a taste, see what we think, but I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit right now. We can put that on the back burner. We don't wanna put that in the fridge now cause it'll just kind of harden up. We wanna keep it room temp. Is there different levels of flavor in scallops? You cook them once and they seem to be done right, but they just tasted vaguely like the ocean, but like really weak. So yeah, scallops are like one of the more mild seafoods that you can eat or shellfish, let's say, is they should have a very mild, like just ocean kind of sweet flavor compared to anything else fishy. So I think it was perfect while you had jiggles. Okay. I guess we can uh, cross our caper brown butter off the list. How easy was that, guys? And now we can come back and do our scallops. Last thing on the list. Let's get those out. We will need a plate. As I called the store yesterday here, we typically get like our fresh seafood from Thrifties. So that's for all of our island folks watching. And Thrifties gets like really nice, East Coast fresh scallops in. So called the seafood department yesterday. It's like, hey, you have any fresh scallops? Yeah, we do. Okay, how much do you have? <laughs> First off, how much do you have? He's like, oh, we got like four pounds in. I was like, okay, perfect. So I'm not gonna get you to put any aside so that they can like stay fresh in the case. And I was like, okay, one more question. When did they come into the store? He's like, this morning, I was like, I will see you in two hours. <laughs> That's how you go shopping for seafood. Those are all the questions you want to ask. Oh, yes. And then the other last thing I asked, I was like, are they on sale? He says, yes. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> so price point on these guys. The sale price is $6.49 per 100 grams. So per kilo. So this costs $34 and we have just over 500 grams worth of scallops. So typically like a protein portion is around 250 grams. We're good. And yeah, I would say another thing with scallops that maybe throws people off is the texture because they're quite like dense and chewy. So yeah, someone like Jiggles that was like, is this how it's supposed to be? Yeah, that is how it's supposed to be. So. If that's not your jam, yeah, save your money for like salmon or some other seafood that you do enjoy. So going to a fish shop would be better than a supermarket freezer section? Yeah, if you can get them in fresh and you know that they like came in that day or like a few days prior, that's the best. Otherwise, if you're like kind of iffy with your fish shop, not really knowing if the stuff's actually fresh, because some spots just pull out frozen seafood, thaw it, put it in the case. That's not fresh to me. So this comes in fresh. But then they also had like options of buying frozen of the same stuff. I'm trying to teach you guys like how to shop for this stuff as well. Because that makes a big difference. So yeah, he packs them in the paper and then he also packs them in the bag for us. And then if we look at it, like there is zero liquid in this bag at all. Zero like purge, no juices. That's also how you know it's really fresh and not frozen. So there's a bunch of like liquid in the bottom of the bag with the scallops. You know it's been frozen because it's just going to kind of keep releasing that liquid. And then that's all the flavor going away, right? So let's take out all of our scallops. They are beauty and then these ones are, so they also come in different sizes, U10 to 20. So that means there's 10 to 20 scallops per pound is the size. And yes, we're laying them out on paper towel because we want them to stay nice and dry so that we can get a nice sear. Don't want them to be wet. That's a good size one. Oh, look at that one. And then as you're going through it, you also just want to watch that they're not like really torn up either. You want them to be like really nice and pristine looking. Mm. 
<laughs> Thank you, Titan. And hi, Eric. Yeah, that one has a foot on it. So we're going to get into that in a sec here, is the cleaning part of the scallops that most people also don't know. Whoa, that's so nice, Orca. Yes, yeah, I'm with you. Came Boko. Scallops are a great canvas for exper or experimenting with different sauces. Yeah, they really kind of take on whatever flavor you put with them. Okay, next up. Does the size have any effect on the texture? Mm, I would say no. Josh, it's all in how you cook it is the texture aspect of it. Because we've had like also what the little bay scallops is what they're called that are like the size of a dime, really small. And yeah, even those have the same texture. Bay scallops have been count counterfeited before with sort of cookie cutter sections of shark, skate, or even rainy. What? Thank you for that fun fact. I love that. <laughs> okay, so our next step here is, yeah, like Eric said, is there's a foot on the scallop or it's called the abductor muscle. So this is what or how they keep their shell closed and open. If we look on this side here, there's this little kind of thing hanging off. All we do is grab it and pick it off. And because that's a muscle they use a lot with the shell, it's tough. And so even when we cook it, it just gets even more tough, like leathery. So that's the only thing we have to do to prep the scallop, quite simple. And not every scallop has it. So kind of consider yourself lucky if you don't have a ton of scallops with that because you're paying for that weight to discard afterwards. I think we did good in this batch though. Really good. I don't think that's one even. These are some of the nicest scallops I've ever seen, I think, guys. I think Sam was right to say like he wanted to try it fresh. So this this is something that they serve as like sushi. Whether it's sashimi or nigiri, you can have raw scallop as well. Is another like kind of fancier dish of scallops is called crudo. So the scallop is like sliced really thin, almost like a coin. And then you put like an acidic little sauce over it and it's almost like a ceviche where it semi cooks it. So nice. But we're gonna start with the cooking first today, guys, and then maybe later on we'll go into the raw aspects of eating scallops. So those are prepped and ready to go. Man, that was easy and they are beautiful. I think I need a photo first. How do you keep these in the fridge overnight? So yeah, you saw how I took them out of the fridge and we did pick them up yesterday. So we just kept them in the bag like that and wrapped in paper. And as long as they're fresh, like you should be able to keep them in the fridge for at least three to four days if they're fresh, fresh. Mythical Suki, thank you for the tier one sub three months in a row. Wow, we've had so many three month resub guys. Welcome in. I know that that means like you're kind of new here. So thanks for hanging out. Scallops are your favorite dust. Big words, man, big words. Okay. Look at the list. We're crossing off the last thing. And the only other thing at the bottom is just a little chive garnish, but we can do that later on. Do we season them at all? Yes, but once again, not until they're going right onto the grill because we don't want to start drawing the moisture out of them. No seasoning until before we put it on the heat. And because we're gonna be cooking them relatively quickly, I think we should just leave them out because as always, with mostly meat, I would say this is a great tip, 
is if you let it warm up just a little bit before you cook it, it will end up juicier in the end. It'll just cook a lot more evenly. Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna go wake up the bear and we're going to light the fire, start the risotto because the fire is gonna take probably around 20 minutes to make and the risotto will probably take around the same amount of time. And then it's just a quick, quick cook. Okay, I'm just gonna mute for a second. <laughs> Don't know what I'm getting myself into. He's up. Yeah, I poked it. It's okay though, nothing crazy happened. Okay, I'm gonna put a few things away. The cheese, the butter, the lemon, the garlic, and the rice. And then we're gonna start our risotto. Just rolling right along. The risotto. <laughs> That's how I usually say it. Cause it just sounds fancy. Risotto. And yeah, we have a Fred the Fly extermination, please. On the scallop? Oh. You know what he's gonna do. He's gonna go feed the spider. Spider cam. <laughs> And I'm actually gonna set up the camera outside on the egg and then we'll, we'll start the fire first. He's so good at that, so good. It went through it. No, he threw the fly through the web. Da -na -na. Da -na -na -na. Going for a walk over to the eggs. And do I usually go on this side? I think so. It's still good. Yes. You guys like that view? I'm in. Maybe we'll go a bit closer. Yeah. Hey, we're using the extra large today. XL. I'm not gonna attempt to even take that off. Let's open it up. Hey. Okay. Gotta first bring the planche in. Give that a washy wash. Take this off first. I'm okay, I'm good. This guy is heavy. That's going into the sink. You guys remember when we used the plancha last? That was on Sunday for the sausage hoagies. Okay. So we're doing most of the cooking once again, like under the plancha. Probably not too much direct grill heat, but first thing we gotta do is kinda just give this a swish. 
let all the little charcoal pieces fall through the bottom of the air holes because it's really important we have kind of even air circulation to keep our fire nice and happy. And then, Sam, do you usually put a little bit of charcoal on the right side as well? Uh, yeah, so I put a little bit more on the left side. A little bit more of a pile? This is kind of my first time setting up the extra large for the plancha. Oh, that's like empty. What charcoal should we use? The middle one? Uh, like nothing really. Maybe the carrots to finish. Oh, then you have lots. No yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'm good. It's okay, guys. He just woke up. Okay, I'm going to switch my glove because this one's really charcoal-y. Now we're going to get the loofed and light that fire. So, you set up the charcoal underneath the area where we're gonna be cooking the most. Oh, we got a little woodpecker. Okay, Sammy's bringing this out again. The Loof Lighter X, battery powered. I've never used this one yet. So first we start with the flame, get the charcoal kind of lit, and then we can come in with the blower. It automatically does that for It you. does it for you? Yeah, so you just press the top one? So press the back button and the top one to start it. Oh, word. <laughs> and yet, yeah, she's closing up the windows already. Okay. Place it right on the charcoal. Oh, are we out of battery? Battery's dead. <laughs> well, how come it didn't go? You have to wait for it to start. Oh, I didn't know. It was going and then it just went off. Maybe the guy broke it. Okay, so while you fool around with that, I'm gonna get a fire started with the OG, the corded loofed. So this guy is a very powerful heat element inside of there. Think of it as like a crazy hair dryer. You just hold the back button close on and then you start. Okay. So you So the heat element gets up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then obviously there's a little blower that just adds more fuel to the fire. So we start by placing it literally right on top of the charcoal. I picked a pretty good sized piece to start so that I would like spread out the fire that way more evenly. And then once you got it kind of rocking, then we can start to spread it out. So point the loof in the different directions. And yeah, this little amount of coals, this small amount, should be lit within about 20 minutes. that way there you go and then you should get like nice kind of wispy flame when the coals are all happy when you pull away which I think we're gonna get pretty hot. Yeah. I'm going to keep going a bit more. I'm going to go over here more.
There we go. Yeah, there's that little flame you're looking for. That's usually my telltale sign that the coals are good. Okay, now. Are you gonna leave it open? Or close it up? So now we'll close it up. We'll open up the bottom. And the top. And then we'll come back and check it in like 10 minutes. Gonna wash my charcoal hands. And we're starting the risotto now. Fire! <laughs> yeah, did you plug it in? Oh man, not again. <laughs> Bonk, you'll be here on time tomorrow? I mean, it's okay if you don't. Oh, you're hungover, but I knew it. Have a wonderful day at work, sir. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Don't work too hard. Take care, stay safe. Okay, let's turn this on. So medium heat in this pan, and we are going to start with yeah, I'm going to start with some olive oil. It's not high heat cooking for risotto. And I like the flavor of the olive oil there. So just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then one other thing actually we got to get going is our little bit of broth. We got to heat it up. So get another little pot. Bye, Bonk. Take care. And, okay, that's staying warm kind of back there in the middle. We'll put this guy here and we'll just keep that on a medium heat. And here's a little bit of our mushroom juice that we saved from the chanterelles. And then before I pour in the chicken broth, I'm just gonna try to get rid of some of the fat there on top. You don't need all of that. Are we associated with loop later? Not yet, Miss Williams. But that is something that we are working on. Also need a ladle for our broth. Yeah, it's in the works. Smells so good too. Okay. Done and done. So you skimmed our fat. Now just pour that into there. Just gonna help your risotto cook a lot quicker if you have that liquid warm when you're ladling in. Okay, this stuff, we don't really want it to be smoking our olive oil. We don't need it to be smoking. Gonna pop this up here and the first thing we're gonna start with is our garlic and shallot just a little bit of sweating we don't really want to color any of that today this is one of the dishes very rare that we're actually not trying to put any color on the garlic and shallot we don't want any brown bits that stock from what we made last weekend? Uh, yes, yeah, it is a duck and chicken stock. Thank you for remembering, Josh. And hi, Sasha. Yeah, so Mama Kate, we had mom on stream first thing today, so you'll have to go back and watch the VOD and see our sauerkraut production. It was really fun. Ukrainian sauerkraut. Okay, how is that feeling? Almost there. 
I mean, one thing we can do if we're being impatient, drop a little piece in. It's not really sizzling yet, so not quite there. I'm pumped to make risotto with you guys. It's been too long for me as well. I think this dish is gonna be really great. The nectar of the gods. <laughs> okay, I think we're good now. Perfect little sizzle. Stir that up. That's like, that sounds like a good kind of late September yeah. dish. Hey guys, late September, Sam saying for our food for friends on Saturdays, we want to do a duck confit with, yeah, lentils. We have some beautiful beluga lentils from Machosen. Yeah, exactly, Hookie. That's what I was saying. Like, risotto is actually one of the best, I think, vegetarian dishes. I mean, it could go vegan, too, if you leave the cheese out. Confit is the easiest thing to do in the circulator. Yeah, confit is so easy in the circulator. And it's honestly so easy in the oven, too, or even on the stove top. What's the most challenging thing to make? The most challenging thing to make... Oh, heck. Um... Filipino, it's this kind of fish that I made. Where's Vune when you need him? Or Hojerific. Do you guys remember that stuffed Filipino fish? That was so hard. Where you like debone the fish and everything without cutting through the skin or anything like that. That was crazy for me. And then it gets like stuffed and fried whole. That was so hard for me. It uses butterfish, if that helps anyone. You guys are like, what are you talking about right now? If you were there, <laughs> you will remember. Those garlicky smells, Sammy? Okay, so it's just, yeah, that's a bunch of garlic, but I am into it. Kind of just starting to turn golden. And actually our next thing going into here, guys, is the rice. We gotta toast up the rice kernels. Such good smells. Oh yeah. Okay, we are ready for the rice before this goes any further. Mix that up with everything. And then as our rice toast, this one actually goes like more translucent compared to like when we toast the jasmine rice dry. When we boil it on the stove top, it actually goes more white. But these kernels go more translucent. I think it's maybe just because of the fat, the oil. Yeah, you don't want to skip this step. Maybe this helps the rice from getting too kind of like gummy later on, too starchy. But I think it also adds a little bit of a nutty flavor to the dish. So we only need to kind of stir this around for about a minute. We're not gonna physically like toast it till it goes browned. And I'm also watching the garlic and shallot to make sure it's not getting too dark. Just 
scrape all that off. And then our next thing that we're coming in with is the wine. So now a little deblaze. The sock fish, <laughs> best way to put it. Yeah, it was hilarious, wasn't it, White Dove? A learning experience. Okay, let's do like a quarter cup of white wine. Stir that around. And now heat's going to a medium low. So once the wine's all kind of cooked out, it'll go almost dry. Now, we can start to ladle in the broth. Is this warm? Yeah, it is actually warm already. Oh, that is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that down now. And we want a very like slow simmer in between adding the broth. So the first one's gonna be a bit aggressive and then as we kind of cool this down now, it'll slow down. So that's why I said, turn down your heat. Okay, now that almost all the rice kernels are covered, just mix this up, because the rice does want to stick to the bottom of the pan. And then I usually just grab this and kind of even it out. Push the rice kernels down as well to make it even. And that is a great start, guys. Okay, that bubble, a bit too much still, so I'm gonna go even lower heat. Like the, the one thing we read is it should be like about three to four minutes in between adding the broth. Yeah, Gordon shouting. What is he shouting though, Eric? I think I'm doing it really proper. Like this is how I was taught. And we are done with the wine now, guys. Gordon's gonna be shouting later when we start cooking the scallops, for sure. <laughs> okay, so all we have left for this, mushrooms, thyme and parsley, and our peas, those will go in at the same time. And then at the end to finish, our lemon zest and juice and our Asiago cheese. Where's the risotto? <laughs> yeah, person on risotto always dropping the ball. Risotto is one of the hardest things to cook in a restaurant though, like during dinner service. Throw the scallops on the ceiling yet. <laughs> hey, Bee Tree, how are you? Aloha. Filipino calls the stuffed milkfish bangus. Yes, I knew it started with a B. Thank you, thank you. You used a whole Chinook salmon for it? What? Was it unreal though? I think that would be so good compared to what I used. You never order it there. At restaurants, you never order risotto at restaurants because I feel they don't have enough time. Exactly, Cookie. So that's why I was like, if there is whipping cream in your risotto, wrong. So like, here is some things that I've done for risotto in restaurants is, well, one of them is we par-cooked, like par-boiled the rice with like, flavorings first and then strained it obviously so it was like 75 percent cooked Where did you go? and then we finish it with like the last 10 minutes okay sam says we're ready uh let me just get one more little one more little broth in the risotto and then we'll pop out put the carrots on and yet yeah, we still have to wash the plancha the planch So guys, before I add this, I should show you. So it's like almost all been absorbed. And that's where we add some more. More, more, more. And then we don't really have to stir it again. I usually just give it a shake to make sure it's not stuck on the bottom. B 
beautiful. Everything's covered. Now you just have the slow burble. Okay, real quick, let's come over here and we're just gonna dress our carrots with a little bit of olive oil as well and some salt. And then those are gonna start searing up on the plancha. You always find it amusing though on short time, excuse me, cooking competition shows like Chopped where they choose to make risotto. Yeah, it never ends well. Hello, Sherlock. Welcome in. And hello, Kame Boko. Thank you for that follow as well. So just enough olive oil to coat the carrots. And we'll come over with our salt. A couple pinches. You can always add more afterwards. And then we'll just toss that up to make sure everything's evenly coated. And we'll let the plancha heat up for a few minutes over the fire before we pop those on. So let's go back to the stove now. I'm gonna wash up my hands. And all we're talking about, guys, when we say plancha, it's just a griddle. So anything that we do on that plancha, you can do in a pan on the stove top. We just gotta show you guys how to cook with fire, because it's fun. Thank you very much, Josh. Yeah, I think that's kind of in my future. Maybe like <laughs> more near retirement age when I start to slow down is I could see myself being like a little cooking instructor in like a school of sorts. I don't know. We'll see what the future brings us. Turn up the heat just a touch. So our bubbles are mostly just isolated right here. I would like them to be kind of covering the whole diameter of the pan. So you just need a touch more heat. I'm the next Julia Childs. Oh, Nike. Oh yeah, that'd be hilarious. Did we coat every finger evenly of the carrots? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that'll be my voice when I'm older for sure. <laughs> Sammy. Oh man, too good. Okay, I'm gonna give this a stir. One note, I know they say you gotta like stir the risotto constantly, but it's actually what you don't wanna do. The more you stir the rice, the more you have a chance of like breaking up the rice kernels and making it kind of mushy almost. So we don't wanna be stirring it too, too much. Just let it do its thing. My Julia accent, I don't think I can do it. I'm not really good at, I don't know. I'd have to hear her talk maybe first. I'll practice that for you, Cookie. Cracked your pizza stone the other night, Snake? No. Would it make more sense to get a steel pizza stone? I mean, why not? I've heard some great things about the baking steel. Look that one up. That is the brand, baking steel. That is something that's always intrigued me because yeah, we have cracked our pizza stone before too. Oh yeah, Cookie just said it too. They get hotter than the stones. Oh. Nike, yeah, I have the sass already too. Is it sass or just confidence? <laughs> little column A, little column B. <laughs> just the perfect amount of both though. Yeah. And I'm getting into this water today. Can't get enough of it. Yeah, sassy confidence. <laughs> well, Fred the Fly came over here. It's over there. <laughs> Got him! Check it. We're not quite there.
Three for three. He is crazy. I can't do that. Yeah, oof on that price. But that's the thing, though, is your baking steel is not going to break. So how many pizza stones could you potentially break where you could just have, like, one baking steel? Just right down, right down. Nice. She got it. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. This cones it. This is the only time I'll let Sam have a spider. Is <laughs> if it's outside. <laughs> yeah, how do you level up? Okay, see this? We're good now. I can just turn that off since it's come to a boil. Okay, it is time now to also add more broth. Three more ladles. And just judging by how the rice kernels look, I think we're about halfway there. I think it's perfect time for us to go put our carrots on the griddle. Loosen it up again. And we are good. Our spider. Give it a little. Burp. <laughs> hey, burp. Okay, how are our coals looking? Pretty even, guys. Pretty even. Let's go even closer. Yes. Sammy oiled the plancha already? Word. Okay. Got our carrots, dressed with olive oil and salt, really simple. I'm just gonna spread those out. Listen to that sizzle. And with this size that we cut them, they're gonna cook in probably about 10 minutes or so. Kind of see how these coals cook them. This is my first time cooking carrots this way. See that carrot kind of dance as I put it on? Hey, stay over there. This one I'm going to put over here. Not as much heat. Okay, and I think we're going to close that up for now because we want a little bit of steam action too to cook them through. We'll come check on them in a few minutes. And we can leave that bowl there, that's okay. I'm gonna give you guys a dual action view. Let's do grill and stove. And that way we won't miss anything. Do we wanna do... Stove large. Huh, we don't have that one. Do that one then, that's fine. Okay, checking our risotto. Let's give it a stir. We can also have a little taste of the rice kernels right now and see where we're at. It's always kind of good to gauge how much time and liquid you will need to finish. Yeah, about halfway there. About halfway. Let's go in with a bit more. I'm going to turn up the heat just a bit more as well. And then when we're three quarters of the way, that's when we'll add our peas, our mushrooms, and the herbs.
Had to find the guy, but have you ever heard of Justin Wilson? Yeah. Doggo, enough. Okay, so I used to host him because he also has a stream on Twitch. Like they go full time stream. An old Cajun chef. Yeah, he is awesome. It is quite entertaining. It kind of brings us back. That's looking good now. Okay, let's go check our carrots. Just gonna grab some tongs. Yeah. You added another one? Yeah. She doubled up? Yeah. She's like, thanks, guys. Mmm. Smells so good. Ah! Ooh, I like the way that it's searing up. I think I might just use my hands to flip it. Flip it. And that's exactly why we oil this. Otherwise, if we didn't have enough oil, it would kind of just dry out on the cut side. And then that's also how we get some nice browning action. This one, I cook those ones strictly on the one side. We're gonna close down the bottom just a touch. And he said, and then, yeah, they're still a little bit crunchy. So let's close that back up again. And maybe another five minutes on that. This is nice and relaxing. The fact that I am cooking over fire and I got risotto going inside and I'm still not stressed. We're crushing it, guys. Hippie Karma, thanks for that follow. Welcome in. Yeah, the Justin reruns. He is good, hey, Ice? <laughs> there we go. Now this is starting to look a bit more creamy as well as the rice cooks and absorbs the liquid. Add some more. I just kind of go by the edges. If the edges are starting to get dry, add a bit more liquid, especially near the end. Beautiful. Imagine you're learning English for six years in school, but you have fear, so write something wrong. You have to take your entire sentence to Google Translate to check if it's right. Aw, trust yourself, Sherlock. You got this. Beatree, Justin was your first sub? Always wanted the pot to use, but forgot his name. Then Twitch happened. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I don't know if Sam knows who he is, if I'm being honest. Okay, another check, just to make sure nothing's burnt in. You guys hear the sizzles? Oh. Yeah, she's going to get you. She's like, back off, bro. She got her fists up. She's like, <laughs> you're not stealing my fly. Perfect. Okay, so now we have kind of regulated those oh, nice. coals. Got our carrots cooking away. And I just kind of go by how bendy they are. We got a bit to go still. I think I might flip these actually. Okay, one more close up. Once those guys are basically done, then the scallops are going on.
Okay, we are making some progress here. I'm gonna taste our rice kernel again. Mmm, almost done. Okay, mushrooms, parsley, and thyme. These are chanterelle mushrooms. I would also recommend oysters would be nice. Maybe enokis, they're nice and delicate as well. Some peas. Fresh or frozen works just fine. Now check that out. Now that is looking delicious. But we definitely need some more liquid, right? To kind of finish all this off. So probably the remainder of that broth is going to be perfect. I don't want to keep scraping that with my ladle. I'm just going to go for the pour. Go with that amount first. Let's see how it looks. No, we need a bit more still. Oh, there we go. Let that come back up to a simmer. And yeah, maybe five more minutes. Yummo for sure, hey? Thank you, Kame. You're off to the market to grab some stuff to finish your sous vide lamb for tonight. Unreal. Okay, guys, so Kame Boko has a sous vide at their house and they're making lamb. So there's another thing that you could do with your ANOVA if you win it. And Swilliams is heading out for his dad's birthday. Have a wonderful day, Swilliams. And wish your dad happy birthday for us, even though he probably doesn't know who we are, but hey, still counts right take care man it was great to hang out with you all day see sammy's touching my carrots out there he's touching the carrots i'm gonna turn up our risotto just a touch to finish it off now that all of this is in here and the rice is almost done we can turn up the heat a little bit more because now we have to control the texture of the rice we don't want it to go too soft and start falling apart. And then I'm gonna actually start adding just a little bit of salt to this because that's something we have not added yet. Couple spoons. Yeah, it does. So yes, once again, just be gentle if you are stirring this. You don't want to break up the rice. Also gonna do a little bit of black pepper. Goes great with mushrooms, peas, and cheese, and also lemon. Lemon pepper, hey yo. Sammy, take the carrots off. Just keep them warm, maybe, for now. What are you feeling? Or do a quick little dump out when the scallops are almost done. Those look so good. Okay. Uh, maybe give us like two minutes. And then that will be like almost done. I'll be finishing it with the cheese and the lemon. 
And then we'll do our uh, two minute cook on the scallops, guys. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't wearing gloves and he licked his fingers. Yeah, I've never worn a hairnet. <laughs> Maybe you didn't, you didn't know. It's fine. We, so we can like cook a little bit more relaxed when we're just cooking for ourselves, which is nice. But yeah, Saturdays, it's like we are strict. This is now a restaurant. Okay, liquid is cooking out now. I'm gonna slow this roll. We still want a little bit of the broth in here to keep kind of our creamy texture. So I think I'm actually going to take this off of the heat now and it's always good to have a little bit extra broth left over for yourself. Just want to see how this is tasting. Mmm, that amount of salt was perfect. Okay, I'm going to add half of the lemon juice and zest to start. And notice I'm adding this at the end so it doesn't concentrate as the risotto cooks. We're going with all the cheese. Always. Maybe even more. And then the only thing that as the risotto sits, it does kind of firm up and keep soaking up the liquid. So you don't want to finish this like too far ahead of time. Just have it more salt. Maybe 10 minutes ahead of time maximum. And that's why I keep the bit of broth there to kind of loosen it up if it does firm up a bit. Thank you, Sam. Rice is perfect though, you would say? Uh, yeah, like once it sits. Yeah. So what we're gonna do for now, while we go focus on the scallops, just co cover that with the lid. And that way we can keep all the liquid in. Okay, let's do this, guys. Going out. Carrots are there. Got our scallops. The only thing we need is salt, and I have a sneezing coming, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Everything's better with cheese, yes. That is correct, Sherlock. I think you have found your happy place. <laughs> okay, we got our scallops. Actually, I'm gonna do full screen view for this. I'm gonna go strictly outside. All right, all right, all right. A little burksy. I think I need one more oil. You don't need another oil. This helps. Just pour and then wipe again? Uh, or do you pour onto the towel and wipe? I would pour right onto the griddle and wipe. You need quite a bit of oil for yeah. the scallops. Yeah, you don't want your scallops to stick at all, guys, so. <laughs> Use quite a bit of oil. He says. And like kind of spread it out. Yeah. I think we're good. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna wait until that oil is smoking before I put the scallops on. So we will season them right now while we wait. I would say out of like all of this seafood, this probably needs some of the least amount of salt. Just because the flavor is so delicate. You really don't want to oversalt it. Not that I've ever had an oversalted scallop though. Beautiful. No smoke just yet. We really want that to be hot, hot, hot so we get our color on there. 
Yep, it's just starting. Okay, now that we see our smoke wisps, I am going to put the scallops on. So I'm gonna start up here, come down kind of in like a circle and go around is how I'm gonna do this because we have quite a bit. Sam says a little bit more oil up here. Okay, and I'm gonna place this with my hands. Yeah. It's way too hard with tongs. Use both hands if you have them. And I'm going salt side down. So remember how you're placing the scallops on the grill because that's where you're gonna go back and flip them. Hey, get back down there. That, that. Start coming up this way. And then in the middle, the last four. Just judging by how it's cooking, we have about 30 seconds until I flip. So I'm gonna go get a clean plate. Run, run, run. Yep, you should take photos of that. Give it a feel. Oh yeah, we got a little bit. Okay hey guys, I'm gonna come back to our first one. We're gonna go for the flip. Yeah, that feels great. Now I'm gonna go for the tongs. Just be delicate. And look at that beautiful golden brown color. So we keep going in our circle. And that is Gordon Ramsay's method of cooking scallops. Whether you do it on the griddle or in a pan. That's how you kind of time it out for yourself. So yeah, you should be imagining that he's yelling at you. This is not a time to dilly dally. Oh, that one kind of sucked there. Okay, and then we did top down. Ouch, it's spitting, so careful. Just a little kiss. Yes, Sam. <laughs> and now we go back to our first one, just feeling the firmness. 10 seconds left and we're good. See how that kind of bounced back? That might be some of the best scallops I've ever made. Watch is awesome. It holds the heat really well. Yeah, this is beautiful. I'm gonna take a quick vid and then I'll take them off because I need these sizzles in my life. Close the lid and open them. Close it for like five seconds. Yeah. And yeah, they shouldn't stick to whatever you're cooking them on either if you're doing it right. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I almost messed myself up. Ramsey, oh, he's yelling at me right now. Don't crumble under the pressure, guys. We're almost there. My hand's on fire though. 
Okay, we're good. Yes, I think, yeah, like I said, those are some of the nicest scallops we've ever had. Close that baby up, shut the top, shut the bottom. Complete, now we plate. Hold on, you want me to hold it in front of the egg? Okay, friends. So ready to eat right now. Oh, baby. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sherlock. Yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> okay, when you're doing something like risotto, you definitely want a rimmed plate for that kind of sauce that we're gonna have. Also, we have a brown butter kind of sauce going on, so you wanna keep that all contained. So first thing going on the plate is gonna be our risotto. I might actually do a little setup here of everything together, because it looks so nice on the cutting board. Definitely have to add that last little bit of broth, I think can see how it's kind of soaked up a bit. Not too much though. You don't want it too loose. You don't want to start cooking it over. Be like, oh no, I added too much broth. So nice and kind of saucy looking. Not so saucy that it's going to run all over the plate. But just enough so it kind of just coats the rice and everything. That makes sense, right guys? I think we got a good indication of how we should make our risotto. She's gonna do a quick top down right now. Okay, real quick. No, I'm okay, thanks. Get out of the way. Kind of off center. We'll do a couple little scoops. Okay, so see how that's like just kind of running. That's exactly what we want. To me, that looks good enough in the plate. That's lots. Okay, now we can put our carrots around the dish. Move out of the way. There we go. And it's always nice when you have like kind of a couple different sizes of your vegetables that you made and kind of place them around the dish. Now we're creating our art, right? Food is art. Oh, I love that sear on that guy. Kind of nestle them in there. And now we come in with the scallops. And yeah, usually scallops are something that are kind of all grouped together on the dish. But I've also seen it done where you can put the risotto in the center and put your scallops around it. And usually you get about five scallops per portion, I would say. So let's do this one so it's kind of like creeping up onto the risotto. Just gonna grab little snippet of chives for our garnish.
nice little fine chop. Just got to mix that up some and it just gets spooned over everything. So chives strictly on the risotto. And then lastly, the sauce. Our caper brown butter sauce. Definitely want some of the capers in there. And I'm gonna go around this way kind of with it. Let our capers kind of sit on the scallops if you can. Go a bit more. And I'll do a bit more kind of just over that. And this is the dish that I have prepared for you guys today. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat this. Holy smokes. Sam, how is it so far? Incredible. Really good? Yeah. Everything together? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, Sam, yeah, just take all of the scallops. <laughs> okay, I'm doing my quick photo and then I get to eat. We did great today, friends. Definitely worked up an appetite. Two kind of more difficult cooking methods that I think we really nailed. And it should be easier for you guys to kind of attempt that for yourself. Yeah, I like that one. Beautiful. Okay, so that's how I would present it to you. I'm not ready. Hi, Grey Dusky. <laughs> you would probably eat it, Snake, after you're like, oh, scallops aren't for me. Okay, let's go in. Nice, firm cut through the scallop. If we look in the middle, it's the same color. I'm like shaking right now. I'm just so excited. Same color all the way through. Because you know, before we started cooking them, they were all translucent. So now they should be all like opaque. What? That's the freshest scallop I've ever had. It just melts in my mouth. Like if you didn't have teeth, you could eat those. Oh, you're from Germany, Sherlock. That's where my husband was born. It is dust. Mm. The little bit of brown butter sauce, let's get one with a little caper on it and see what we think of the brininess. It needs the caper. It really does. Kind of brought out more of the ocean flavor that way. Okay, let's try our carrot. Oh, I'm spitting. What? Carrot, not mushy, nicely caramelized, and like super fruity. We grew these. Mmm. In Hawaii, you say ono oh ono oh licious, cow cow time. <laughs> I cannot wait to come visit Hawaii, obviously, probably next year. Maybe, hopefully. I think the yellow carrot's actually more flavorful than the orange. Okay, and now, let's get our saucy risotto. A little bit of peas, some mushroom in there. Nike, you'd pay 25 US for this? This would be a little bit higher price point. Uh -huh. Maybe 35 bucks? No, not even. 
Yeah, 35 Canadian, I guess, is, that's fair. Mmm. The lemon in the risotto. And I can't believe I've not gotten into that yet. I need to have that with the scallop. It's super refreshing, but you still get like the creamy funk from the cheese. Yeah, 32 Canadian. We could easily make that and sell it for that price. The only expensive thing on the dish is the scallops. The risotto is not expensive. It just takes time. Risotto and scallops? Whoa. Give me a sec, guys. My nose is running for some reason. It's too good. As I was chewing the risotto, I was getting some of the like really nice floral mushroomy flavor as well. I am really happy with this dish that we came up with. I think this could definitely sell on a menu. I'm gonna keep coming back to that and just shaking my head. <laughs> so good guys. I feel like I have wings today. Like what is this? Can't handle it anymore. <laughs> We're flying away. <laughs> Sherlock offers 30 euros sold. <laughs> they have a burger alone that costs $11. That's fast food there. Yeah, it's insane, dude. I'm going to I'm going to keep saying it is like fast food industry is really taken away from good restaurants. Why well, still gets 14 day quarantine time and they have put on cooperative tourists in jail. Oh man, like your guys' numbers have shot up. So stay safe over there, man. I'm worried about ya. Okay, friends, what a stream. Just over four hours and we did so great. We made sauerkraut today with my mom earlier on stream and we did scallops over the fire with carrots and a risotto. That was really fun, hey? Thanks for the awesome cook today, friends. I feel like we really all learned a lot together. Now we get to wrap it up because, well, we got to go to bed early. Hours. Yeah, see you in 11 hours <laughs> is when we'll be live from now. So we typically start at 11 a.m. Pacific, but because we have brisket going on the smoker tomorrow, stream is going to start at 2 a.m. Pacific time. 2 a.m. Pacific time gonna be live with Sammy and then probably switch out from there is then I'll come on around my regular time I would say and do the side dishes for the barbecue platter so that's what we're cooking tomorrow for our catering event it's gonna be fun we have to leave the house by 5 p.m. go deliver it for 5 30 whoop whoop okay who are we gonna go raid what's going on on twitch today 11 a.m. German time. Hey, that's doable. Love you, Nike. What are we feeling? Josh is making potato skin bacon cheeseburgers. We have Feebub's doing his finale of sausage week. We want to go do some more sausage yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Feebub's it is. I'm gonna make sure I get all the bees right there. <laughs> Got it. Okay, friends, I'm hitting this button. Thank you everyone for everything today. I hope you are all excited to be able to enter our Anova giveaway. Pumped for that draw on the 27th of this month. And yes, many, many resubs today. So once again, like all of our Kind of three month resubs. Welcome back, guys. It's great to have you in here. There it is. There she is. Even comes in a nice little case for you. 
All you need to do is hook it onto your pot. That's it. Good to go. Okay, let's go see Bebubs. I don't know what type of sausage he's making today, but I'm intrigued. So that's how what we did on Sunday. Let's go see how he makes his sausages. Okay, friends, take care, stay safe, wear a mask. We'll see you tomorrow, 2 a.m. Pacific. We be barbecue in Texas style. See you then. You're gonna fly away. Bye. Bye.